Good evening, everyone. I'm calling the Board of Education meeting to order at 4 p.m. And uh, we have the establishment of a quorum, I see. Uh, uh, our, good afternoon. This is our Board of Education meeting for Thursday, February 2nd, 2023. This meeting will be live streamed on the RUSD YouTube channel. And if you would like to view the meeting on our Spanish live stream, please follow the link provided on the agenda, which can be found on our website, riversideunified.org. Our meeting today is held in the boardroom at the Riverside Adult School and is open to the public. Uh, do, Suzanne, do we have any uh, public agenda request input? Okay. Um, then at this moment, we will adjourn to closed session and return at 5.30 p.m. Thank you.
evening, everyone. I am, good afternoon, and uh, I'm reconvening our open session at 5.37 p.m. So welcome, everyone, to our RUSD Board of Education meeting for Thursday, February 2nd. This meeting will be uh, live streamed on the RUSD YouTube channel, and if you'd like to view the meeting on our Spanish live stream, please follow the link provided on the agenda, which can be found on our website, riversideunified.org. Our meeting today will be held in the boardroom at the Riverside Adult School and is open to the public. A limited overflow meeting room with a television monitor will be available if the main boardroom meets capacity. And as always, the meeting will be live streamed on the RUSD board meeting YouTube channel. For members of the public who would like to address the board, please see a staff member at the entrance and they can assist you. So I'd like to report uh, that the board did take action during closed session. The governing board approved an agreement for the resignation of employee number 101073 by the following vote. I, myself, Angelo Farouk, yes. Dale Kinnear, yes. Tom Hunt, yes. Brent Lee, yes. Dr. No Noemi Hernandez-Alexander, yes. And we will now, th th and that was the only action taken. We will now uh, go to our Pledge of Allegiance, which is provided by video and will feature Serena Bahor, who is a sixth grade student from Kennedy Elementary School. Good evening. My name is Serena Bahor. I'm a sixth grade student at Kennedy, and I am president of Student Council. I enjoy playing soccer, and I just want to say I appreciate my principal and my teacher, Mrs. Grambergs, for everything they do. Now, will you please join me in the pledge? Put your right hand over your heart. Ready? Begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Serena. Uh, we will now proceed to our high school student reports provided by our great uh, student representatives. And we will be begin with our representative from Arlington High School, Jasmine Shaker. Welcome, Jasmine. Good evening, President Farouk, Superintendent Hill, and esteemed board members. My name is Jasmine Shaker, and I'm pleased to be here once again presenting some exciting, ideas, exciting news about Ar Arlington High School. Since we have started our second semester, many events have been hosted and programs have been celebrated on our campus, such as our National Honor Society. We hosted an, hosted an opportunity fair for our underclassmen, an RCCC CAP Parents Night, a middle school visit, and we are finalizing plans for our winter formal dance. I would first like to tell you about our opportunity fair that we hosted from January 11th to the 13th. Our various programs and AP classes set up tables to show our underclassmen what their programs were all about. Our AP classes were represented as were programs like Link Crew, ASB, Yearbook, Biomed, Cybersecurity, Game Design, etc. During this three-day event, informational flyers were handed out about interest meetings or how students could get involved with the programs for the following school year. Arlington's National Honor Society is an organization where students with high academic and leadership qualities do community service for other programs on and off campus. I am proud to serve as a member of our National Honor Society, and on October 19th, we hosted an induction ceremony. We now have 44 members. In total, the members of our National Honor Society have collectively earned 671 community service hours this school year. Arlington also had the opportunity to host an RCCC CAP Nursing Program Parents Night. There was one night hosted specifically for 8th graders and one for current 9th graders, which had around 150 students total. The program starts in 9th grade and different courses are completed every semester to receive college credit. These students also receive guaranteed admission into the RCC Nursing Program. We were able to reach out to 8th grade middle schools and counselors for students to be able to transfer to either Arlington or Ramona for the opportunity to be in the RCC program. RCC representatives, professors, coordinators, and graduates of nursing program were all invited to the parent night. They spoke about general information, requirements, the core sequence, and opportunities available for them. Our Project Lead the Way Biomedical Science program recently hosted a CTE AVID VAPA middle school visit for Shamama middle school students. All students were split into eight groups and provided with two chaperones to guide them around campus and see the different programs during the day. 
These programs consisted of medical assisting, biomed, cybersecurity, game design, chamber singers, avid, ceramics, etc. Each group received firsthand experience on how each of these programs operated and were able to explore some of their passions on Arlington's campus. On February 4th, Arlington High School presents an enchanted evening at our 2023 Winter Formal Dance, which will take place at the Riverside Municipal Auditorium. We are excited to celebrate a night filled with dancing and great company. Thank you for your time, and I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your evening. Thank you, Jasmine, for that report. Uh, this, are there any comments or questions? I have one question, Jasmine. When yes. the Congratulations with Thank the 944 you. National Honor Society and over 600 hours. <laughs> are those projects done individually, or the National Honor Society as a group does the projects? Um, it's as a group. We all have okay. different sign-up wow. sheets for separate events. So if you're able to make it, we all come as a group for National Honor Society. Beautiful. Thank you for contributing that way. Thank you, Superintendent Hill. And Dr. Hernandez-Alexander? Okay. Uh, Trustee Hunt. Thank, thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Jasmine, for presenting that. I echo the superintendent's comments and, and to uh, commend you in Arlington for having your, your winter formal um, here in town yes. and because you get to spend less time on a bus and more time together. Yes. Um, just tell me a little bit about it. I was just talking to Mr. Weston back there. I am always been impressed with cybersecurity. I was reading the other day, there's in America alone, there's 3.1 million job openings, openings in cyber. What does the program at Arlington consist of? Do you, I don't expect you have a great input on it, but can you tell me what you know about it? Um, I'm not too sure about the cybersecurity program. I'm not personally in it, but I will get more information on that and let you know. All right, you might want to ask your good principal. Maybe he helps us understand that <laughs> next meeting and game design. I am extremely interested okay. for our students across our USD on those. Thank you and go Lions. Thank you. Thank you for that report, Jasmine. Uh, our next uh, student representative is from Martin Luther King High School. It's Pia Prashant. Good evening, President Farouk, Superintendent Hill, and esteemed members of the board. Uh, it's wonderful to be here again. Uh, once again, my name is Pia Prashant, and I proudly represent Martin Luther King High School as their student, student board representative. With the new year, Martin Luther King High School begins a fresh semester uh, with a com continual legacy. Upholding our standards of excellence, our athletics community has given Martin Luther King High School great pride as we come to an end of, our, of the winter season. All of our winter sports have shown a high level of competitiveness while maintaining humility and discipline as all of our teams are currently vying for postseason action and will continue to carry the values of purpose, ambition, character, and knowledge that we champion here, for here at Martin Luther King High School. Alongside our PAC values, as Martin Luther King High School, we honor and respect the legacy of Martin Luther King Jr. Uh, on January 16th, Martin Luther King Jr. Day, the Martin Luther King High School community celebrated and honored our namesake by having 52 students, along with 12 staff members, participate in the MLK Walkathon in downtown Riverside. The week prior to Martin Luther King Jr. Day, our Associated Student Body, along with our Black Student Union, planned an in-school celebration, having our students walk in different tables with information about Dr. King's life, uh, sign a large birthday card, and have some birthday cake while learning about the life and legacy of Martin Luther King Jr. I can say that we are so proud to be Martin Luther King High School. On Tuesday, January 17th, Mr. Dell Roberts came to speak to members of our Black Student Union, um, along with many other students on campus during our office hours. He shared many stories, many inspirational stories about how Black Student Union and Multicultural Council first came into existence in our district. Uh, we also had our first Dads on Duty volunteer, uh, Mr. Vernon Edwards, introduce himself to our students. Uh, he can be found a couple days a week on our campus um, during lunch. Our Black Student Union and multi Multicultural Council are also hosting lunchtime activities during school to celebrate Black History Month this month. And Martin Luther King High School is also preparing and planning for our King Highs Remember program. After two years of virtual ceremonies, Martin Luther King High School is excited to host in-person interviews this year, conducted by the students in our U.S. History classes on March 3rd. Welcoming approximately 200 veterans to share their stories, our King High Remembers program connects our students with the history that they are learning and honor the service of our veterans. This year, Martin Luther King has unfortunately lost our beloved math teacher, Mrs. Florina, Florina, excuse me, Florina Loopshy. 
Mrs. Loopshy dedicated 22 years teaching at Martin Luther King High School and made an unforgettable impact on all her students as well as her colleagues. Uh, Mrs. Loopshy touched and inspired so many lives and taught le us lessons beyond the world of mathematics. She was a mentor who uplifted and encouraged her students to push themselves above and beyond and push themselves to their true potential. I feel extremely blessed to have had Ms. Loopshy as my AP Calculus student last year and learn from her passion and her thoughtfulness, thoughtfulness that she carried in the classroom. Uh, the Martin Luther King High School mourns the loss of Mrs. Loopshy, but honors and celebrates her life and her legacy. We love and we miss Mrs. Loopshy. Pushing forward, Martin Luther King High School has been preparing to share, spread, and strengthen the legacy we have created and will soon be entering the 2023 to 2024 school year. We recently visited our feeder middle schools of Earhart and Miller, exposing our soon-to-be students to the various clubs and opportunities found on campus. We intend to expand the knowledge of, cam uh, the knowledge, uh, of campus of the class of 2027 with our eighth grade parent night to be held on February 22nd, giving them an opportunity to further explore what is offered at Martin Luther King High School. So as the 2022 to 2023 school year comes to an end, Martin Luther King High School is working hard to further build upon the legacy we have created as a school, encompassing the PAC values of purpose, ambition, character, and knowledge. Thank you. Thank you for that great report, Pia. Does anybody have any comments or questions? Okay, thank you so much. Oh, oh okay. actually, Dr. Hernandez Alexander. Pia, thank you so much for um, that comprehensive report. I want to first extend my condolences um, for your loss, for your community's loss, for your school's loss. I know um, uh, Ms. Lipsia was a, a very special teacher and had a great impact. And so I, my condolences to you and, and to the King community. Um, I'm curious about the, um, what is it, the dads on campus? Um, dads on duty, I love that. Have you experienced that? Have you talked to the dad on duty? Or what, what does that look like uh, at King? I have not, but I do plan on visiting that soon and seeing what that's about. So I will get back to you on that. Yeah, that looks, I would, I would love to hear about it because it sounds like a really great opportunity for parents to get involved and dads to, to, to be the hero on campus. So thank you. Thank you. Yes. Trustee Hunt. Yeah, thank you as well. And I echo my colleagues' comments and confirmations for you. Um, I love this uh, pack. Uh, purpose, ambition, character, and knowledge. I, I think my colleagues and I would just like to see a little more about that, if you have handouts and all. I just, anytime you can organize something like that and puts a group of people, let alone a high school campus, in a mindset that is so positive. Uh, congratulations to you and your principal. You. you as well have my condolences for the loss of your teacher. Um, it's been quite a while, but I lost two teachers in high school. I was with some of my classmates three weeks ago. Some of us can't walk as well as we used to and all. But with all that, we remember Mr. Ryan and uh, particularly Mr. Jacobs. And a great teacher will stay in your heart and in your mind forever. So condolences to you and the fellow Wolves. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you, Trustee Hunt. Uh, thank you so much again for your report. And uh, even though we will be later adjourning in the memory of Florina, and, and you know she's had 22 years uh, of her 30-year history just here, you know, in RUSD. But we just want to express our sincerest condolences to you as well and, and our family. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, our uh, next speaker from Abraham Lincoln High School, Mustafa, is absent today. So we're going to move on to the Educational Options Center, uh, Mika Michaela uh, uh, Anderson. Welcome, Michaela. Hello and good evening, President Farouk, Superintendent Hill, and esteemed members of the board. Uh, my name is Michaela Anderson, and I'm here on behalf of EOC to bring you some updates on what's been happening at our school. Um, our students and staff returned from the holiday break refreshed and ready to start the second semester and we had a total of um, 35 EOC students graduate during the first semester so a huge congratulations to them on their hard work. Um, the health CE CTE pathway continues to provide students with hands-on experience to help prepare them for a career in the health field. 
Our staff is supporting our EL students by working closely with our EL coach to provide students with graphic organizers, sentence starters, and using technology to improve language acquisition. SAP counselors, counselors continue to provide social and emotional support to our students by meeting with them one-on-one on one, one on one and in group settings in the classrooms. They work collaboratively with staff to develop the themes based on student feedback. We had a record number of 44 students complete their COPE conditions and return to their school of residence. We continue to have our dropout prevention specialists meet with students and their families to re-engage them in school by connecting them to available RUSD and community resources. The guidance techs on site are pro proactively working with our seniors. They are working with them individually to complete the FAFSA process and to develop their post-secondary plans. EOC is in the middle of their basketball season. They play their games with the surrounding district's alternative education programs. Because we don't have a gym, we play our home games at Lincoln High School. Lastly, Summit View Home Base Program had an elementary school field trip to the Haruba Mountains Discovery Center, where parents, students, and staff got to learn about prehistoric dinosaurs, explored the nature center, and were introduced to a variety of reptiles and anthropods. Thank you for this opportunity. This concludes my report. Thank you, Michaela. Yeah. Great report. Any comments or questions from our colleagues? Okay, please give everyone our best. Thank you. Thank you. And our last uh, student representative report is from the Riverside Virtual School, Andrea Gomez. Welcome, Andrea. Good evening, Board President Dr. Farouk, Superintendent Hill, and members of the board. The Riverside Virtual School is happy to welcome a trailblazer, Dr. Noemi Hernandez-Alexander, to the Board of Education. RVS looks forward to working with you. Since my last report, Riverside Virtual School has hosted volunteer opportunities, a dance, and a fundraiser, as well as participated in the 28th annual Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Walkathon held on Monday, January 16th. At this event, students in grades TK through 12, staff, and administrators represented RVS. At RVS, we want our students to know and believe that they are in the right place, that they are seen, and that they are cared for. This is why RVS has started reaching out to students who would benefit from receiving additional support academically, socially, and emotionally. Every Wednesday, RVS staff and students are available for in-person tutoring from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. at the RVS ASB Activities Office. This Monday, RVS began offering additional office hours in the morning and afternoon at five different community centers across Riverside. The goal is to provide RVS students, regardless of, the, of their locations within our city, additional opportunities to receive the support they need to be successful. I would also like to share that RVS's daily download, a daily video that is sent out to students via YouTube, has been redesigned and has received a positive response from both students and staff. It is now completely student-run and gives students the opportunity to share information with everyone. Aside from our daily video announcements, new segments are featured every day, such as Management Mondays, which provides skills for students to improve learning, Tuesday Dedications, where students dedicate their learning to someone who inspires them, and Fun Fridays, where students win prizes for participating and engaging in a variety of ways. My personal favorite is Talent Thursday, a one to two minute video which showcases an RVS staff member's hidden and unexpected talent. It's important for students to know that teachers and staff are people too. Hopefully by knowing more about the adults around them, students will be more comfortable to participate in class and at school activities. I am also very excited to announce that someone in this very room who is a trailblazer for RUSD and its community is set to appear in an upcoming edition of Trailblazer Tales. We invite you to tune in via our YouTube channel on Wednesday, March 1st to watch the video. Until then, I look forward to sharing our next updates with you at our next board meeting. Thank you for your time. Thank you for that report, Andrea. Is there any, uh, Dr. Hernandez-Alexander? I want to say, Andrea, thank you so much uh, for your report and thank you for this pen. I'm looking forward to putting it on. Um, I would like to hear, first of all, I, I really appreciate the way that you've um, explained just how much your teachers create a, a, um, an environment for engagement, albeit virtually, that you guys have something to look forward to. I like, the, I like what's called daily download. I like, that, I like the idea. I think I might steal it from my own class. Um, but I also wanted to ask you if you could share with us, what are some of the things that you get to do because you're a virtual student? Like what is being a virtual student open, open for you so that you can, what do you do when you're not in, in class virtually? Uh, like me personally? Yeah, or like just... what are, if you can give us something if either from your own life or uh, some of your colleagues' life, some of your student, fellow students about 
you know, what, what opportunities they are able to, to, to take on being in virtual school? Yeah, so definitely being in virtual school, we have a lot more opportunities to actually get to see each other in person because sometimes it's difficult. You don't always know what your classmates look like or sometimes even what their voices sound like. So having those additional opportunities, whether it be movie nights or fundraisers or dances, events like that, it really opens up, you know, this like idea of community, right? And this family that RVS students have, and it gives us more opportunities to see one another. Me personally, things that I'm doing, um, I'm the director and editor of the daily download. So most of my time has been recording videos, writing scripts and that type of thing. Good for you, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Hernandez Alexander, Trustee Lee. Thanks, Dr. Farouk. Uh, thank you for your report. So if you wanted to also see these daily downloads, how would we get on your list? Oh, you can go on to Riverside Virtual School's YouTube channel and all of the videos are there. We okay, post so a video. just subscribe to your channel on, on yeah. Virtual School. Like Perfect. and subscribe. All right, thank you. <laughs> like and subscribe. All right, thank you. Great. Uh, so th thank you so much for your report and uh, we appreciate everything. Thank you. Thank you. And I, and I just want to mention, we always appreciate all of your guys' thoughtful efforts to, to be the voice of our, of our students in our respective schools. Know that you're welcome to stay if you want, but if, uh, if you need to do homework or whatever you feel you need to do, just, you know, you're welcome to leave as well. So thank you so much. So we are now going to turn to our district group reports portion of our agenda. I'd like to invite our parent organization leaders to give reports, and we're going to begin with Dr. Azeen Mobasher, president of the Riverside Council Parent Teacher Organization. Welcome. Uh, good evening, board president, Dr. Farouk, Superintendent Hill, and our USD board members and the cabinet. I uh, wanted to start by congratulating Dr. Alexander to becoming our, elect our new elected board member and Mr. Lee for <laughs> staying on. Um, so it's been a few months since I've been here and I just uh, wanted to give you an update on our events. Our membership drive is an ongoing all year long and uh, all, all the schools are active on our um, online uh, app called Totem. Uh, so currently we have 3,433 online members and 2,122 manual members and total of 5,555 members, which is way more than this time last year. And uh, so thank you to all members. And um, there is still time if you want to join, just like Mr. Kneer here, joining all our schools, which is amazing. Thank you. <laughs> Um, so it's really easy. You go online and you can become a member of our PTAs in any of the schools you want. Um, second, February is the birthday month for PTA. And we celebrate it usually on February 17th or around that day. Founders Day celebration is on February 15th this year. And we are very excited because we're celebrating in person. And it's going to be at our um, Frank Augustus Miller Middle School. And this will be our 126th year. So we're hoping to see um, all of you, or most of you there. Um, show Your Voice is the theme for this year's Reflections Art Program, which has been bringing arts to life for more than 10 million students since 1969. This program increases awareness of the importance of arts in education. We have had 86 participants from 18 schools, and 24 of them will be advancing to the 23rd district level. We will be celebrating our student artists and their amazing projects tomorrow uh, on February 16 in the beautiful Performing Arts Center of Ramona High School. Uh, our PTA convention, which happens every year, and it's when we um, all the PTA leaders get together and um, advocate for the students, it's happening in April. And th this year it will be in Sacramento. So. Um, before I finish, I just wanted to uh, share with you uh, a comment that's been passed on from parents to me. And uh, parents really love to be involved with the schools and the different programs that the schools are offering and um, with their children's education. However, most of them, um, most I'm not a parent right now <clears throat> for RUSD, but most of them, they're um, not in education system, so they don't understand the lingo. So when the flyers go home, please remember um, that 
they need to be more self-explanatory for our parents. So um, they, uh, I've heard from them that they don't attend because they don't understand what this is or what that is. And so please remember this when you send information home uh, with your students. And also just a reminder that our award cer ceremony this year will be on April 5th and the calendar invite will be sent soon. Thank you again for everything you do and for your time. Thank you, Dr. Mabasher, uh, for, for that report and really important feedback also to think from the perspective of the audience that we're communicating to, so appreciate that. Any comments or questions? Okay, Th thank you so much. Thank you. So unfortunately, Ms. Oropesa is unable to attend, provide her report from the DLAC program, so we look forward to hearing from her another time, and I hope that if she has a written version that that can still be disseminated to uh, uh, our board, because the voice of DLAC members is very important. Uh, we will now proceed to the president of our district, African American Parent Advisory Committee, Ms. Jessica Shields, and her report is provided to us by video. Good evening, Board President Farouk, Board Members Superintendent Hill, and the community. I am happy to report out on behalf of DAPAC. With Black History Month already here, we would first like to thank Rochelle Kanatsar and the Heritage Program for supporting and bringing the Black Voice Foundation's Footsteps to You exhibit to some 30 school sites here in our USD. This exhibition of original artifacts from the collection of Jerry Gore encompasses a specific portion of the era of enslavement in the US. It allows students to view up close documents such as tax receipts from the sale of human beings, wills passing property from one generation to the next, first edition slave narratives and slave shackles. Now, as we learn from the Gore Collection curated by the historian Hardy Brown, several questions will be asked of our students, including, if presented with the opportunity, which side of history would you choose? And this gives students a deeper understanding of the often untold side and perspective of US history. Now also, since partnering with the Riverside Foundation, we were able to kick off our first fundraiser. We are selling and sell our rise t-shirts in honor of Black history all year round. And we are taking pre-orders now until February 22nd. The link is posted on the RUSD APAC Facebook page, and it will continue to be sent out via email to parents of Black students district-wide. We also want to thank Dr. Sosa's team for sharing dashboard data with our parent group and answering many of our questions because it's important to work together on improving Black student achievement. To get a more comprehensive understanding of Black uh, student experiences in our USD, we did ask parents to help or have their child complete a Black student perceptions of academic support and engagement survey. I want to first thank the parents who encouraged their children to participate because we received 41 responses across all grade levels. And here are some of the questions or the questions we asked with a few of the responses. First question, describe your best teacher. How does he or she help you learn? Few responses, she makes it fun for us to learn by breaking things down and not making me feel inadequate when I do not know. One who listens and is thoughtful, one who provides guidance and allows room for mistakes. Acting it out is how I best learn. She's patient, kind, and always asks if we need help after she teaches me. Second question, what is not helpful in your learning journey? Responses, when she writes my name on the naughty list for doing something. Busy work is my greatest enemy. I understand that classwork is mandatory by the district and it does not, and it does help people learn, but it usually ends up just adding unneeded stress for me. Being called out for not having my glasses yet. Not having things explained to me. Who often supports you on campus? My friends. My heritage teacher is the best. Teachers and noon duties. Some classmates like a sliver of them. What helps you avoid discipline problems at school? 
My anxiety keeps me from doing anything that will cause attention. Doing my work alone instead of with my friends so I don't get distracted. Deep breaths, focusing on good things. What would you want your teachers to know that would help you feel more connected to school? If you already feel connected, what helps you feel connected? Help me stop getting made of, made fun of every day. Always be kind and don't yell. I would like for them to know that if I didn't get it done with more than enough time than I need it, then I really did need additional help. I just want them to know me more about my personality so they can understand me as a person by building relationships. I wish I could be in a class with only students who actually want to learn. My mom said I can take honors classes in middle school. I wish there was honor classes now. And this one person already feels connected. And this person said, having great support from friends and teachers. So this shows us that we are strong in some areas and there are some pockets of excellence but there are definitely blind spots in how we connect and care with black children. In the words of education researcher, Charles Payne, there's been so much reform and so little change. We have work to do our USD and we are asking the district to bring in culturally responsive teaching as a way to reach and support our children's social and emotional well-being, and also as a way to close the achievement gaps. We are not talking about engagement strategies, but rather strengthening the connection between brain-based learning and rigorous culturally responsive teaching. If you would like to view the exhaustive list of responses, just reach out to me so we can have a conversation. Thank you for supporting our children and also allowing their voices to ignite a fire to finally do something different. Thank you to Ms. Shields for her report. And uh, for anybody who has comments or questions, uh, feel free. We can follow up through Superintendent Hill uh, regarding her report. Uh, our uh, Special Education Community Advisory Committee report from uh, Ms. Alicia Ricks is not going to be possible, um, and she'll report next time. But again, if there's a written copy of it, uh, please, uh, I hope that can be distributed to all of us here at the, on the board. Uh, we're now going to shift to district superintendent comments. Superintendent Hill. Good evening, everyone. Since our last meeting, I've been able to uh, have the pleasure and opportunity to visit uh, Jefferson, Lake Matthews, and Washington Elementary Schools, as, re as well as both virtual schools. Um, I was pleased to see a strong focus on student learning in all of the schools and particularly with teachers modeling for students, then gradually releasing responsibility to the students to generate their work independently while the teacher circulates supporting um, questions and clarifying misunderstandings. It's been an area of focus of ours this year for students to independently generate their work so that we can really see what they know and are able to do and then support, uh, provide them support in the areas where they need it. Following up on some prior comments, I do want to report that we started training school leaders in the use of Narcan. Narcan is the brand name for the medicine naloxone, which is a nasal spray that can be utilized in response to a suspected overdose of opioids. With this first round of training, Narcan is now available at our sites for use by trained personnel. Our next round of trainings will be for health assistants and for assistant principals and identified campus supervisors. If you would like to learn some more about the signs and symptoms of uh, opioid use and how to keep your loved ones safe, Riverside County is uh, running a Faces of Fentanyl campaign, say that three times fast, uh, which you can access at facesoffentanyl.net. I would like to take a moment to offer some information about the CIF uh, media release that was distributed yesterday. The district did investigate some allegations of violations of the uh, CIF rules, and we self-reported to the CIF our findings. 
Yesterday, CIF released an announcement of their determination that the Poly High School Boys Basketball Program would be placed on probationary status effective immediately. Additionally, the boys varsity basketball forfeited all regular season league and playoff contests played through during 28-19 through 2021-22. Uh, Polly may request reinstatement to full participation for 2023-2024 by November. I want you to know that the district is committed to principles of victory with honor and we do regularly train our coaches in CIF rules, regulations, and best practices. We will integrate the lessons learned through this unfortunate situation into our future training. And these priorities advance the highest principles of character, trustworthiness, respect, responsibility, fairness, caring, and good citizenship. Poly High School and the district are both committed to upholding these core values. The district also uh, issued a statement which you could view the full statement on our homepage. And finally, as you heard a student PIA report today, the Martin Luther King High School community laid to rest teacher Florina Loopshy. I didn't have the pleasure of knowing her very well, but I was uplifted by her. Her family wanted to have a celebration of her life, which it definitely was, and it was uplifting to me personally who didn't know her that well to just hear about a, a educator who was excellent herself and really knit together the child the family the classroom and the school community um, would just showed me so many elements of a, of a life well lived so I thank Mrs. Loopshy for her service and her family for sharing her with us and um, I'm going to remember that service forever. This concludes my report. Thank you. Thank you for that uh, report, uh, Superintendent Hill. Uh, we will now at this time shift to public input. Members of the public may provide comments on any items of business to be transacted or discussed by the board that are not already listed on this evening's agenda. The board is limited to responses they may wish to offer on topics that may have not been agendized, yet there are permitted to ask clarifying questions as to a presenter's public comments. Also, I'd like to note that we did not have any public comments submitted via the electronic communication submission form for this meeting. So I'll turn to our board clerk, Tr Trustee Tom Hunt, on how many cards we have. Yes, sir. We have four cards. The one we have to disqualify it is a, uh, a, someone present here that wanted to speak on behalf of someone who is not present and that is disallowed under a plethora. I have three for myself. Well, then she's here for herself and she would have the three minutes. But as Ms. Uh, the first up be Ms. Yolanda Esquivel, Mr. Tony Perez, followed by Ms. Sandy Ritter. Right. Thank, you. Thank you, Ms. Ritter. Thank you. Uh, and for, okay, I thank you, I got it. So welcome, Ms. Escaval. You have three minutes. Thank you. Good evening, members of the board, Superintendent Hill, and staff. My name is Yolanda Esquivel, and I am here representing LULAC of Riverside, the League of United Latin American Citizens. <coughs> I am here only to thank you again for your letters of opposition and your resolution to the construction of the RCTC project in our Eastside community. We just want to let you know that LULAC and several other community organizations have been working, I have to read everything because I'll forget. Okay. <laughs> um, and several other organizations have been very busy gathering support for our cause to oppose this detrimental Metrolink project. We ask all of you, all of you, to please continue your good work in letting others know of your strong opposition to this project. And we also would like to let you know that 
Just yesterday, we met with our assemblywoman, Sabrina Cervantes, uh, from District 58, who has gladly joined our cause. And she wanted us to let you know that she is willing to work with any of you in, on this issue, that she will be uh, working closely with us in order to uh, do everything possible to prevent this project to go up here in our east side community. Um, lastly, um, I just, we would all just like to uh, remind you that we look forward to having our east side school built. We need it. We want it, and there's no question about it, no question. We want it built, and we would like to have it built as soon as possible. Uh, our children have really been um, neglected for too many years, and I think you all understand that. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thank you Ms. Escobar. <coughs> our next speaker is Tony Perez. Welcome, Mr. Perez. You have three minutes. Good evening. Thank you for uh, giving me the opportunity to speak. Um, I'm speaking tonight on, on behalf of our students and, um, and behalf of, of teachers as well. Um, the issue I'm speaking about are electronic devices uh, in classrooms. When I speak to other teachers, faculty members, administrators, counselors, we universally agree that the biggest disruption and distraction to the learning that's going on in classrooms are kids interacting with electronic devices. And some campuses uh, in our district have policies, school-wide policies addressing the issues, while other uh, schools don't have school-wide policies. The schools that don't have policies it's left up to individual teachers to create their own policies within their rooms. And what I have found is that that creates an inconsistency across the campus and confusion uh, ensues as far as what the rules are that the kids have to follow. And it also, honestly, it creates an opportunity for kids to, to, to use their devices because there is a confusion. Um, I, I would urge the district, I'm, I'm sorry, the, the board and the district to consider adopting a, a district-wide policy about electronic devices and their use during class time uh, across the board K-12. Um, a, a middle school in the district, Gage Middle School, has a policy and I believe Poly High School has a policy and I, I've heard really great things coming out of Gage as far as uh, cooperation and success with the policy and and at Poly, I've heard it's a little bit more bumpy with the high school kids, but I've heard they've had uh, good success there. And for sure, they're having uh, a, a definite success as far as how to deal with kids that are not kind of cooperating with the policy. So they're having success there as well. So uh, in closing, I would just say that uh, I would urge the district and the board to be more proactive uh, when it comes to electronic devices across the district. Um, I believe it will help with the students' learning. Uh, I also think it will help with our, our greatly increasing need for credit recovery that's facing our district right now, and, and also help with the fact that, that students that are facing that credit recovery issue are being pulled from classes like fine arts to make up credits in academic classes, but then they're losing their fine art credits. So it's kind of a Peter to pay Paul thing. So I would just urge the, the district to be more proactive and consider those issues. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Perez. Our final public comment is from uh, Stacy Ritter. Welcome, Ms. Ritter, you have three minutes. Thank you. Last meeting, I provided my complaint for the school site council for Arlington. You allowed their own teachers to serve in parent roles, which is a direct violation of Ed Code 65,000D. Quick, quite quickly, I received the acknowledgement for my complaint, as well as a notice from Arlington of two new vacancies. However, rather than review the previous elections and seat the parents that would have won had the teachers not illegally ran, you chose to seek new nominations for two parent positions. 
The new ballot listed two new teachers, both from the feeder elementary schools. I know this since they were my own children's teachers and many other kids at Arlington also. Thus again, creating the unfair advantage that any teacher would have over independent parents. It was no surprise to learn that the two RUSD teachers won the election for those two parent seats. Does one really have to wonder why this district has such a parent engagement problem when parents want to participate? Your staff makes it nearly impossible for us. Now the Arlington School Site Council will have to review two years worth of decisions made by the previous invalid councils. For those that may not know, the School Site Council reviews and advises on the school plan for academic achievement and ironically, the parent involvement, po parent involvement policy. I decided to do some research. I first went to the school website to search for the most recent agenda, which should have been for January 9th meeting. That agenda was not posted on the website. Instead, I found the agendas for the October 3rd and November 7th meeting. The agenda for January was never posted in violation of the 72 hour rule. Since the other agendas were still up on the website, it makes me wonder if the December 5th meeting agenda was posted either. A school site posting would not be sufficient since the public is not allowed on campus. I requested the meeting minutes, the parent involvement policy, and the school's accreditation report from the Western Association of Schools and Colleges referred to in the minutes. From reading the minutes, I came across some interesting lines I want to share. Regarding budget, quote, where are we investing money and how do we see if that is the best way to service our students? Are we getting the expected results we want? We need to take more of a proactive approach and a vast majority of money goes to staffing, unquote. Regarding parent involvement policy, we could share it more with our parents and be more proactive with sharing it with our parents. It seems just like a checkbox. What can we do to get more parent involvement by using it? Not much of a consequence if it is not being followed. Currently, Arlington's numbers are low for math and ELA, but their graduation rate is very high. What does that tell us? You're graduating kids who are not prepared. The number one indicator of student success is parent involvement, and this is an example of how you are failing. By keeping parents' voices silenced, decisions are being made that most parents may not agree with. And the reason why Sandy's not here is because she's at a school uh, award ceremony for her son that's on the same night, so that's why she was not here, so I'm reading that on her behalf. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Ritter. Uh, Trustee Hunt? Ms. Ritter, Ms. Ritter, I, I, I'd like to ask a clarifying question, if I may. I'll try to answer, but I, and I'll try to, I'll, I'll try to present it. Uh, we're allowed to make clarifying questions and or a statement. So the, the two uh, new, I think there's four altogether, is that right? I, I, I left my minutes at home. I, uh, but how many folks were on the school site council? that were elected, let's just ask you that. There's two new elected okay. parents who are teachers okay. from the feeder school. Okay, but, the, but they are parents, you they say? They are parents. They are parents of young people attending Arlington, I assume? Yes. Okay, all right. So they do fit, but you see the, the issue there. They're still a teacher and they have recognition. Mm -hmm. So it, it makes it really hard for just regular parents who want to be involved. Right. Well, I, I empathize. I empathize with you. Thank you. I, I do like my colleagues and, and uh, the superintendent in particular. We've talked about this many times. Uh, we can't just rely on the school sites, uh, electronics. We, with something this important, asking parents to be involved. I know it's extra work in this case for Mr. Yabara's staff, but to send something out to all parents, it's, uh, you know, Trustee Hunt, Trustee Hunt, respectfully, because this is not agendized, to well, give direction. I'm allowed to make a statement I'm, I'm, under, under Robert's rules. I hope we would try to work to improve that, is all I'm saying. Okay. And I want us to avoid it should all, and if need be, a bylaws that says if it's not done to the proper guidelines, then a, a re election will have to take place so they know. I don't ever want us to get the board get into appointing people. So, I, I understand where you're coming from, but that's giving very specific direction outside of the agenda aspect, but I understand. Thank you. And I'll provide the information, Mr. Hunt. I'm not certain that Arlington didn't provide the information, so I'll get you some information about it. Okay. And, uh, thank you, Mr. Uh, doctor. Thank you, Trustee Hunt. And uh, we'll have our administration follow up with all three of the speakers, so thank you. We'll now move to board member comments, and we'll start with our student board member, Karina. Welcome. 
Thank you. Um, I have only one thing. I just wanted to talk about the RUSD public transportation fees and how in order to qualify for this funded service, one has, or funded service in grades seven to 12, one has to live 10 or more miles away from the school they attend or else you have to find other means of transportation. I just think that this is something that can be improved or the required, or like the qualification requirements can be altered to better fit people because imagine a student who lives nine miles away and has no other means of transportation and still has to maybe walk to school. So I just think maybe the qualifications can be altered a little bit for, to best fit someone. Thank you for that feedback and our administration will take note of that and, and, and follow up accordingly. Thank you. Our next representative will be Dr. Hernandez Alexander. Thank you. Dr. Farouk, I um, wanted to just kind of give an update of what's happened since the last time we met. Um, today I had the pleasure of visiting uh, with Principal Hansen over at Poly High School and we um, got to tour the campus and I got to see all that's happening uh, on that campus and thank you for that. I got to witness some exceptional teaching and learning going on. Um, I was impressed with the music uh, that students were creating in the music tech uh, and composition class. Um, and so thank you for that. That was a, a kind of kudos to Polly uh, for, um, for being a great school. Uh, also, uh, this week I went to Ramona High School to attend the uh, parent volunteers, uh, the inaugural meeting actually of Comunidad Latina, the Riverside, Latino community of Riverside. I wanna congratulate those parents who organized this group um, who had the vision to bring people together. Felicidades para los padres que, uh, uh, que asistieron a esta primera junta. I want to uh, commend the group and commend the parents of, the, of RUSD for having really great parent engagement that night. Uh, we learned a lot about uh, the unfortunate ubiquity of fentanyl use in the U.S. Um, and we were uh, really uh, fortunate to have Riverside Police Detective Javier Cabrera come and give us uh, an education on um, how to notice the signs of students under the influence, and more importantly, um, how to help your student in the event of an overdose of your son or your daughter. Um, I am pleased to learn that uh, there are some qualified uh, persons that are receiving training uh, at the school sites in administering Narcan. Um, it could potentially save a child's life, and it's uh, it's a good thing that we're providing and being uh, trying to be proactive in that. I also um, appreciate or I, I'm grateful for the fact that Narcan is found to be generally, generally harmless if given to someone who is not suffering uh, an overdose. So I'm, I am glad that we're erring on the side of caution on that in an emergency response situation. So um, I encourage all parents to keep an eye out for the next um, meeting. Um, the meetings are bilingual. I also had the privilege of witnessing exceptional talent at the RUSD um, Honors Musical Chicago. It was fantastic. Um, students performed their heart out and they were really, really good. So for those of you who took photos, I recommend that you uh, keep them because I, I just have uh, real faith that one of those students, are, or if not many of those students, are gonna become famous uh, celebrities. So you can keep that picture and say, oh, I saw them when they were in a high school production. So I wanna just thank uh, the dedicated staff, teachers and volunteers and parents that put this wonderful production together. Uh, lastly, uh, we had an LCAP town hall meeting. As you know, we were receiving emails, texts, phone calls, uh, website reminders to attend town hall meetings. Uh, uh, this, uh, the one I was able to attend was also at Poly, and um, I, you know, I kudos to the to the cabinet, Dr. Christopher's team that uh, brought everyone together. We need to hear more from our parents. We want to hear uh, your needs, your desires. We want to hear what is the best way in your um, child's view of what your child needs and how we can best serve them and how we can best uh, utilize the funds. So please come out uh, when you receive a, a, an invitation, uh, try to come through. So finally, I just want to uh, wish everyone a, a happy Black History Month and invite everyone to the 43rd annual Riverside Black History Parade that will be taking place next weekend on February 11th in downtown Riverside. Thank you.
Thank you, Dr. Hernandez Alexander. Trustee Lee. Uh, thank you, <clears throat> Dr. Farouk. So I'm going to piggyback after uh, Dr. Alexander some of the things she said. I also want to wish congratulations to um, uh, Mariela Fernandez for getting the, the group together, the Comunidad Latina de Riverside together, and all the parents who showed up. Uh, my apologies that I got stuck at work and couldn't make it to your first meeting, but um, I heard similar great things that Dr. Alexander shared. So congratulations to getting that group going. Um, it's really important that we hear from uh, as many of our, of our education partners as we can, uh, getting various perspectives. Um, so I'm grateful that, that that group is getting parent-led and being supported by, by uh, some district with space and whatnot. Uh, also, I had the opportunity to attend uh, two of the LCAP meetings, uh, the first one at Ramona High School and the second one at Poly. Um, great conversations were had at the, at the tables. Uh, I liked the format. Um, to give kind of a brief introduction on what the expectations were and what the, we were asking parents and community members to, to do during that hour or so. Um, and the conversations were really rich at the table. Uh, so encourage, I know we have some more meetings coming up. Um, maybe somebody can share uh, the dates uh, uh, when we're all done uh, to encourage people to come. Um, so. Uh, Again, good job to Polly, good job to Ramona, and I know there's good, there was a, there, I think the one at North happened too, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, so Arlington's still coming up, and then we have some virtual town halls coming up too if you can't make it in person. Uh, and then last, I wanted to wish uh, congratulations to all of the History Day winners at their, at their school sites, uh, and for those that learned this week that they were going on to compete at the county level. So congratulations to all of our, of our historians here in RUSD uh, and to their families supporting their students in their projects. Uh, and of course, of course, their teachers who are um, making our students passionate about our history uh, and kind of exploring, uh, especially local history and California history. Uh, and, and, and developing their, their hopefully future historians down the road. So congratulations to all the winners. Thank you, Trustee Lee. Uh, Trustee Hunt. Some of the echo. Uh, I do want to agree with our student board member on the busing. Uh, today, Mr. Kinnear and I in our operations uh, facilities committee, uh, the new bus program, which you'll be seeing soon, was brought forward. I distinctly remember when I first came on this board, uh, there was a situation with a young man from the east side who had a very bad case of leukemia and he couldn't be out in the sun and no one was paying attention at that then district office because he was walking three miles i just did some quick math just to see i live up off of hay warden if i wanted to walk to the tyler mall it's 8.4 miles i think by the time i get there maybe it's a good thing i don't want to shop anymore if i had to walk 10 miles to school, maybe I would be truant. Maybe I would be absent. And that's something, we, and we talked heavily about that last meeting. Let's not, it's going to cost more to have shorter bus uh, requirements, but we weigh that against ab absenteeism. So I hope we look at that in an equitable way. Um, last Friday evening from 6 to 9, uh, over at RCC's digital library, I attended a workshop put on by the Riverside Seroptimus on human trafficking. Uh, included on the panel were Deputy, uh, our District Attorney, uh, Mike Histron, his Deputy uh, District Attorney, Ms. Gypsy uh, Yeager, who oversees these very disturbing cases, her investigator, um, a gentleman who heads up uh, Dads for Daughters, and uh, uh, Chief Larry Gonzalez and the lady who's really behind everything, Opal. And I was just looking for my uh, Tim, because he was gonna give me some notes, but that's okay. Uh, there you are. I'm, I'm very pleased to learn from Mr. Walker that very recently 300 of our administrators here at the district took her course in, in all of this. It is a plague across our nation. It is really not new, it goes back to slavery. It really is the same way pimps and those kind of cretins attract young people into their to work for them but they're using a tremendous amount of social media and uh, a lot of the answers to questions were well if you see her with a tattoo or new clothes and or, or him uh, do this and I finally asked the question that's okay those are great and all but 
tell me how we get out in front of it. And it comes down to two things, education and communication. And uh, though the Riverside Seroptimists are not offering this, the Corona Seroptimists headed by Gigi Banks, who many of you know is, is a Riversider, is a Riverside business, will be quite willing. But I think, Superintendent, we should look at this and see how we could have these presentations that will include some young people who got caught up in this net and who'd lie and give them kudos because it's very embarrassing for them, but who li whose lives, and hopefully it can change, were ruined. And they're ashamed and all, but they're willing to come forward. With the confluence of freeways in Riverside, you know, all of that, uh, we are a hotbed for it. And a lower income, a lot of Spanish-speaking kids, uh, the same way a pump does. You're beautiful, you know, I'm gonna give you jewelry and all that. But, and we saw that incident recently, the La Sierra High School girl that was catfished, and this Cretan came out from the East Coast and killed her her uh, mother and her, sis, uh, her grandfather, I know, there's her father too. Um, it is, it is, everyone up there just, and it was tearful. And I was glad to see about 40 people did turn out. And I wondered about giving up my Friday evening to do this. I'm so glad I did. It was a tough subject, but please, uh, Superintendent, if you will consider, speak to your, our president and vice president about it. But uh, if we can save one child, you saw this past weekend and I saw they caught him, but there was a, another Cretan in a car that pointed a gun at a 12 year old girl and tried to get her into the car and she was bright enough not, not to do that. On an up, uh, I too attended uh, the performance, all high school performance of Chicago, along with uh, Trustee Leah, but no, Kinnear, Trustee Kinnear, and, and my colleague here, tr Trustee Hernandez Alexander. She got much better seats than I did, but I don't know if they, what, what that's about. I spoke to the young woman afterwards that plays Velma. Velma's the one that B.B. Newworth played on Broadway, that Zeta Jones played on the, uh, the movie. It's a tough role, it's a demanding role. She's in charge, she has her, it's dancing and singing. I went over to her afterwards, somehow she recognized me as a school board member, thanked me very kindly that we are supporting it, which I share with all of you. And I said, look, the only thing I want in return is when you're on Broadway, get me some backstage passes. Because this young lady is going where the young man that played Amos, the young woman that played Roxy, very inspirational young, uh, I think she was Polly, in a wheelchair that was a reporter and just spun that thing around and, and was just great. But uh, uh, congratulations and accommodations to uh, Anne-Marie, uh, who had uh, Guzzi, who headed this up, and uh, Tony, your your former colleague there at North, uh, Miss Grotness, who continues to, uh, you know, they don't retire apparently. Teachers don't. Their hearts are too big. They can't. And was back there directing everything. It was just great. I attended the uh, with Mr. Lee and and uh, and Mr. Kinnear, the El Cap at Ramona. Very interesting. Uh, set at the table. Uh, Several parents were there, including Mrs. Roy. Uh, the lady to my left graduated from Ramona in 2011. She now is a child at Shamal and one in elementary. I admired so much that she was there and being involved. The only tiny C criticism I gave to our, our folks, Dr. Christopher, was a lot of it, it seemed to me, be affirmation of what the district is doing now. Do you like this? Do you like this? And I would like to see a little more of what do you think, Mrs. Smith, Mr. Jones, would improve your child's uh, experience here and advance them in education and advance uh, advance your, your part. But just very, very well done. And lastly, uh, uh, who sat next to me, by the way, at, and went Friday night to the uh, human trafficking was, I believe she runs our resource center, Susanna uh, Madurio, uh, 
who was supposed to take a bunch of notes for me and, and hand them to me, but she, we talk about outreach all the time, and I must commend Dr. Perez, who she reports to. She started a uh, Facebook page um, called uh, Amigos do, de, help me, uh, de RUSD. She has 1,000 followers on that now. She posts a lot of RUSD items, suggestions. She had a coffee, I think it was two weeks ago, 1,000 people on a coffee and uh, about mainly Hispanic. Uh, I'll sit in and nod next time, but uh, Hispanic issues. And I just want to commend and always catch our employees doing something great. So again, Dr. Perez, thank you for your leadership with her. But if you do see Suzanne, uh, shake her hand and say, muy bueno, because she's just so invested in the district. Thank you, Dr. Farouk. Thank you, Trustee Hunt. Trustee Kinnear. Thank you. My Friday night, uh, uh, Mr. Hunt, was far more relaxing than yours. I got to uh, attend the, the Master Choir Festival for, uh, for RUSD. When you think about History Day, Master Choir, the Honors Musical, which you guys uh, refer to, they're all special events during the last few weeks, and they all showcased exceptional talent and exemplary programs of our district. Uh, and tomorrow, we add the middle school and the high school uh, honor band uh, at Ramona High School. That's amazing. I was somewhat surprised uh, that these incredible events weren't mentioned when Mayor Locke Dawson referred to Riverside as the city of the arts in her State of the City address. Student talent and dedication along with expertise and commitment of staff are obvious when I view these performances that help form a foundation for Riverside as the city for the arts. And I believe that our programs really do that. At uh, previous meetings, I've commented on the Riverside County Transportation Commission's 500 space parking hub to be built directly across the street from our new East Side Neighborhood Elementary School. You've heard me state, I can't imagine any parent saying it was okay for this transportation facility to be built that close to their child's school. Improved public transit is critical to our community's infrastructure, but not a stone's throw from a pre-kindergarten to sixth grade school when there are alternatives. Building a parking facility and bus area on the Vine Street side of the facility poses no danger to our future school. RCTC needs to consider other alternatives. I sincerely thank local representatives, LULAC in particular, and others for their leadership in supporting this board's resolution in opposition to the current RCTC project. Special thanks to Congressman Tacano and RCOE Superintendent Gomez for their letters written to RCTC opposing the project. And now news from LULAC, uh, the support of Assembly Member uh, Cervantes. I quote this from Dr. Gomez's letter. Our office uh, joins RUSD and numerous community members in expressing concerns over RCTC's planned project and its potential impact. I thank Senator Roth for his conversation with Ann Mayer from RCTC and his opposition to the project. I discussed our, our board resolution with former Assembly Jose Medina and he said he would write a letter to the Commission. We need to continue to voice our concerns about this project. I made my first visit ever to Lake Matthews Elementary School. Although I had to pole vault over the crevices in their expansive paved play area that are severely cracked, I found the campus to be clean and beautiful. I saw engaged students actively participating in both collaborative and independent lessons. Teacher collaboration was evident. I saw similar lessons in many grade levels and the work displayed in classrooms demonstrated that staff were working together. I saw effective teaching, 
but I know from my own experience, it's good teachers working together that makes a great school. I saw evidence of that during my visit to Lake Matthews. Finally, their celebration of the first 100 days of school made it a particularly fun day. Uh, great job at Lake Matthews. Today we heard from a teacher about cell phone usage. I wonder if in the future, Karina, we could hear from students uh, about how cell phones disrupt the classroom and the impact that cell phones have uh, from your perspective as, uh, as, as both a, a student and maybe from other students. I also attended LCAP meetings. I, I made it to Ramona, Polly, and, and North just the other, other day. I agree they were great conversations, but I also agree that we must improve parent involvement uh, in our schools in order for uh, their involvement to make a difference. The key with, uh, with the conversations that I heard was how do we turn the LCAP discussions into LCAP actions. Uh, I look forward to hearing forward uh, to hearing from our staff members how we do that. Thank you very much. Thank you, Trustee Kinnear. I want to echo your comments regarding the RCTC effort and really appreciate everyone's advocacy. And obviously, our district has been very consistent and committed to advocating on our end. I will continue to coordinate our efforts with uh, Superintendent Hill on the district's uh, efforts on those on those matters, and uh, we'll continue to hope for a, a, an appropriate resolution to that matter. I also want to echo my colleagues' comments regarding some of the events uh, with the district and the community. Um, the LCAP meeting I attended was at North, and my takeaway was similar to your Trustee Kinnear, that there's feelings and, 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 and themes expressed, but uh, from our side, we see them translated into line items that show up on you know proposed budget items. And I, I'm not sure that the community sees that exact transition. Um, I don't know if I'm articulating it properly either, but um, so how we circle back with the parents and tell them, okay, this is what we heard, and this is how we tr uh, translate that into, uh, from a bureaucratic sense, the, uh, how that plays out for the, uh, the board to vote on LCAP. I think it would be helpful for the, the, uh, the parents to see that, that full continuum. And uh, echo comments regarding the History Day uh, and Black History Parade. Uh, I will note that it's my understanding that the Grand Marshal, right, Grand Marshal of the Black History Parade is our very own Superintendent Renee Hill. So that's, uh, that's a great thing. Uh, and it's, it's okay to clap for that, come on. <laughs> um, the, the last thing I'll just say is, uh, you know, at the State of the City, uh, Mayor Locke Dawson, one of her calls to action uh, it, uh, aligns, you know, with her school district was with, about ending youth homelessness and the uh, unsheltered student population. And so I just want to say that, uh, you know, our district is very much committed to that issue. And uh, I hope that there's tangible things that we can do um, beyond what we've already been doing in conjunction with the city on that effort. So uh, that concludes my comments. Uh, we will now move to our consent calendar. All items listed under the consent calendar are considered to be routine and will be enacted by the board in one motion. There will be no discussion on these items prior to the board vote unless members of the board request to have specific items removed from the consent calendar. Uh, I'll now turn to Trustee Hunt if we have any public comment cards. Mr. President, we do not. Okay, thank you. And uh, now I, I want to know if there's any uh, board members that want to pull uh, items before we take it in one motion, and I'm happy to defer to our student board member if she wants to consider making the motion also. Yeah, I would like to make a motion to approve consent calendar items I-1 through I-11 and omit item I-12. And I-12 is personnel related and that conforms with Ed Code. Uh, so we have a motion from our board members, a second by Trustee Hunt, please vote. Yeah, having any challenge yeah, issues? I think there's a tech issue. She's 
okay. just push it. If it's if somebody can. Oh, okay, it went through. Perfect. And in the future, we always usually like to defer for you to go first. So, our, yeah, our apologies. Um, thank you so much. So that motion carries unanimously. We can now entertain a motion for item I-12. Motion by Trustee Hunt. Second. Second by Trustee Kinnear. Please vote. Uh, Dr. Hernandez Alexander. Okay. So, uh, and do you want to abstain formally or just no vote for the record? No vote? Okay. So the motion carries. Okay. And now, let me see. One moment. Okay, my apologies. So we'll now proceed to our action item section of the agenda. Our first action item tonight is regarding the ad adoption of resolution 2022-23-51 to authorize the reduction or discontinuance of particular kinds of service. I turn to Assistant Superintendent Missy Barra. Yes, good evening, Dr. Fruk, Superintendent Hill, members of the board. Tonight, we bring to you an annual item. It is the particular kinds of service credential reduction. So we do bring forward as a recommendation that the board approve resolution number 20, 22, 23, 25, excuse me, 23-51 for the reduction of discontinuance of particular kinds of service. This year, we have a total of four teachers. This is the preliminary cuts. If you remember through the state of California and through Ed Code, we have to do preliminary cuts by March 15th. That means we have to determine areas within credentialing that we might have a reduction in. Final notification is in May. This is the preliminary. So the two credential areas are two full-time equivalencies within social studies, two within science. Our next steps will be to finalize staffing for 23-24, finalize the course offerings for 2023-24 through the schools. That would be your middle schools and your high schools because you saw that those were both sub single subject credential areas. Retirements do come in between now and May 15th. Those do also impact those areas. And then by May 15th, we make that final determination if there is a final need of notification of elimination in those credential areas. So this would be conclude for the Board of Education. Our recommendation is for you to approve the recommendation of resolution 2022-23-51 in order to initiate a reduction in certificated employee services pursuant Ed Code sections 44949 and 44955. Thank you, Ms. Ibarra. I'll turn to our board clerk, the Trustee Hunt. Do we have any public comments on this matter? Okay, and now we can, uh, if there's any comments or questions from the board, otherwise we can entertain a motion. Trustee Lee. Um, I know anytime you see these kinds of things, it can be a little bit fearful for, for some. Um, I mean, last year, as you mentioned, something that's kind of routine. Uh, when we had preliminary, um, I remember there were several on there. And how many ended up getting noticed? Final notification? Yeah. Zero. Okay. Thanks. Thank you, Trustee. Trustee Hunt? That just got answered, but we, you, would you be noticing or asking us permission to notice perhaps by March 15th? Is that correct? This is what this resolution is asking for you to allow for us to move forward on these reduction in those service credit areas. And just for the audience to know, this is preliminary by state law. If we think we may have to lay off your position, We've got to notify them by March 15th. March 15th. And then a final notification is? By May 15th. May 15th. When, do the, when does the district start accepting retirement requests? Because I know attrition will play into this. We are accepting them now. We, so. we accept them all at all times. <laughs> we never deny retirements or resignations. Yeah. Um, we do accept them. OK, I think, I think that helps. Thank you very much. Thank you, Trustee Hunt. We can enter, oh, Dr. Hernandez-Alexander. Are you gonna ask for a motion? I move to approve. No, I move to approve. Okay, motion by Dr. Hernandez-Alexander. 
Second by Trustee Hunt, please vote. If our student board member can weigh in first, ideally. Thank you, the motion carries unanimously. Our next action item tonight is regarding the adoption of two resolutions that may be necessary for the consideration of tie-breaking criteria and also the retention of specially trained cert certified employees. And Ms. Ibarra can walk yes. us through that. Yes, I have the, the three tonight. So this next one has to do with your tie-breaking criteria. Also an annual requirement, we bring forth to you the tie-breaking and skipping criteria for the certificated. What this is, is this actually allows um, for us to be able to look at certain criteria when you are determining those layoffs. So what we're asking in this resolution is approvals requested for the criteria to retain certificated employees who possess special training or experience commonly referred to as skipping criteria pursuant to the Ed Code Section 44955D. These are your areas for tie-breaking. You see that we have teachers to teach identified and teacher shortage areas. That would be an, order, an area that we might have if they have special education that is considered a shortage area for us. Teaching supplementary authorization or teaching subject matter authorization. Bilingual cross-cultural language and academic development certificate. That is your BCLAT. Also your CLAT gives them criteria to, to be able to look for tie-breaking earn degrees beyond the Bachelor of Arts or Bachelor of Science level, preliminary multiple subject teaching credential or preliminary single subject teaching credential or clear teaching credential, life teaching credential, and then prior um, contracted certificated experience with the district and prior classified employment with service within the district. All of these are areas that go into a tie breaking. So this we do ask for your, in this authorization, this is part of it in the resolution. The next one is for our skipping. Skipping is what would actually allow for that first part. If you have um, someone who has, let's say two, you can have a tiebreaker. So the information that I provided you first that you would be voting on and approving would be the tiebreaker of your time. That helps us break a tie. Skipping allows for someone in these areas, if they have the same start date, we call it a seniority date, date of hire, they can then skip because these are areas that have special criteria for them. So a bilingual cross-cultural language and academic development certificate, BCLAD, those are most all of our teachers who have a BCLAD are teaching in our dual language immersion program. Experience teaching theater within the last year. The reason theater is up there is because the credential area that theater goes with is English. Most English teachers have not had the immediate teaching of theater experience. Full math credentials, specialized training for CTE specialty programs attained within the last three years, ASB directors, and specialized training for biomedical and engineering programs attained within the last three years. So these are all the criteria for skipping. So tonight, we ask the Board of Education for approval as recommended for Resolution 2022-23-52 for tie-breaking criteria and Resolution 2022-23-53 for retention of employees with special training or experience. Thank you, Ms. Ibarra. I'll now turn to our board clerk, Trustee Hunt, if we have any public comments on this. I do not, sir. Is this public comment related to this item? Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, so I'll turn to my colleagues if there's any comments or questions. Trustee Hunt? Thank you, Assistant Superintendent, for your proposal. Your, uh, thank you so much. Uh, the question I had is about just about uh, bullet point two, you had experience teaching theater within the last year. If I recall though, and that's experience and that's important, but th theater is, 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 if you have a degree in theater, you can apply to be a theater teacher, but you can have almost any other degree and you can be a, th a theater teacher? English is the credential area that English you need to is teach the credential. Theater. Okay, because I know we've had. Yes a lot of ups and downs over yes. the years with theater. We have some wonderful folks, former Ms. Grotness included. So thank you for your answer. Appreciate it. I would support this when ready, sir. Thank you, Trustee Hunt. Any other comments or questions? Move to approve. Motion by Trustee Kinnear. Second. Second by Trustee Hunt. Please vote. Trustee Kinnear, Trustee Kinnear, your vote hasn't. 
Thank you. The motion passes unanimously. So, okay. Our last action item tonight is regarding the adoption of resolution 2022-23-64 to decrease the number of classified employees due to a lack of work or funds. Assistant Superintendent Ibarra will share this. I'm assuming you'll give the context regarding the state. Yes. Okay, thank you. Yes. So this is um, two years ago. As you remember, last year was our first year. Laws changed within the classified um, and the ed code to be able to now, we have to follow the same criteria as we follow for certificated employees. So all classified employees now have to be noticed by March 15th. That is new. That is not how it's been. In past, it's been either 60 or 90 days. There's been different transitions to that. And that's what most of the, for the last entirety we followed until last year when the law changed we now have to notice the same time frame and it's the same process so they get receive a preliminary notice which is March 15th and then the final notification if need be by May 15th you will notice on this resolution there are a lot more classified has different rules and regs so what classified has is they have the right to bump into their last position so classified becomes a domino effect in a particular kinds of service. Because you can see right there, let's use the assistant principal secretary. There's one position that we have to notice. The, the, the piece to that is that person might have been an attendance assistant too in our district. So we then have to notice the lowest level attendance assistant too, who maybe that attendance assistant too had been an elementary library media assistant. So then we have to go in. So it's not that those are all positions that will be eliminated. It's that those are all positions, particular kinds of service areas through not just needs of specific ones, but also the needs that might have to be of a lower level position. The other piece is within the classified world, if you reduce their year or their months or their hours, you also have to notice them in the same timeline. So you see up here the positions that currently right now we have identified that we need to um, do what's called the preliminary reduction notification. This is an example of some of the positions that we have to reduce based on hours. So example, you see we have to reduce five hours. Some of our, two of our instructional assistants who are six hours have to go to five. Some that are instructional assistants, we have three positions in the level two that have to go down to six. So it's an hour reduction. Next steps for us with regards to our classified is we have to finalize staffing, 23, 24 year, more retirements come in, and then by May 15th, we'll determine if there's a need for final notification or elimination. Most all of those employees on that sheet have to do with either bumping and or an elimination of that position but they will have rights to whatever their last position was last year same thing in fact last year you'll probably remember we had I want to say it was close to it was in the high 80s and we ended up preserving and being able to bring back almost everyone on that list those who didn't come back they elected because they didn't either want the position to go back into or the reduction in hours wasn't uh, sufficient for them so tonight we ask the board to approve the recommendation for resolution number 2022-23-64 in order to initiate the reduction of classified employee services pursuant to the education code sections 45114, 45117, and 45298. Thank you, Ms. Ibarra. Trustee Hunt, we have a public comment. Mr. President, we have one from Ms. Sandy R. on J3. Okay. Ms. R. Welcome, you have three minutes. Thank you, I had to speed across town since Miller decided to plan their event on a school board meeting night. This is the kind of direction that needs to come from the board, that your school sites need to be allowing for parents to come to board meetings. Your meetings are set for the year. There's no reason that the school should be planning stuff on your meeting nights. And I'm not talking about a game. I'm not talking about a small activity. This is a school-wide activity that they are consistently planning on school board meeting nights, and it's getting unacceptable. Um, I don't know if I sent you the study already, but there was a study done that over the last 10 years, administrative staff has grown by 87%, while at the same time, teachers and students have grown by less than 10%. 
So you're cutting all of these low-level positions, and yet your district is top-heavy. It is so bloated, and you need to really look at those numbers. Because like I said, this study is showing that across the board, schools have you know, doubled at a rate much higher than students and staff their administrative staff. And clearly your administrative staff isn't keeping you compliant, so I don't know, you know what the purpose is, because I'm sure you all got my email about these school site councils that should not be in your consent. They are not routine. This is a huge 3,000 page document that we had issues with, and you knew I had issues with. I'd been talking to several of you throughout the day, and it should not be buried in your consent calendar. I know none of you want to make eye contact with me. I think Mr. Kinnear is the only one that'll make eye contact, but it's true. And I think that you're going to keep losing staff because you're going to keep losing kids. And that's the bottom line because I know so many parents that have already pulled their kids that are frustrated with the schools and you continually keep parents out of the table. So Arlington decided to post something for Black History Month saying um, when you're not invited and given a seat at the table, bring your folding chair. So I think maybe from now on to send the effect for these meetings, I'll start bringing my folding chair and sit here so that you can see that parents want a seat at the table and you're not allowing it. You're not allowing it on your committees. You're not allowing it on your task force. You're not allowing it on your dress code committee. Like I've had many conversations with Mr. Hunt. Parents need to be involved. I have a question, Mr. Thank you, Ms. Hart. Trustee Hunt, is it a clarifying question? Well, it's I mean, a clarifying, actually, it's a clarifying actually it, it doesn't need to be since it's related to the agenda. You can ask any I'm question. asking the speaker a clarifying question. What I'm saying is you, can, you don't have to limit it to clarifying since it's agendized. That's all I'll say. Okay. I have a clarifying question, Ms. Roy. <laughs> Thank you. Good to see you again. Uh, just on your comment about this 3,000 page report, mm -hmm. schools. Are you saying this is centered on Riverside Unified School District? Or what? where did this report come from? Is I'm it about, about our district or is it about? Are you talking about the administrative level? It's the entire state of California it's over the, the past 10 years. Yes. So it's, if it's, I may jump in, Mr. Hunt. Thank you. I think there's two different reports that, that uh, Mrs. R mentioned. One is the 300 pages that are all of the school plans 3,000. The other was an 80 page report. A, uh, a page, report that, a report says that said the, the breakdown between staff and students was staff was increasing and students were decreasing. Two different reports. Okay, but were either one of those specifically about Riverside Unified? The school plans are Riverside Unified schools. Both, I don't know both about topics the, are about Riverside Unified. You're cutting staff, you're cutting a lot of bilingual staff when you have a 68% Hispanic district. So that's a big issue when you're cutting six, you know, a lot of bilingual positions. And yet your district has so many administrative positions that you could probably cut one or two of those and keep uh, all the others. Ms. Roy, I just want to say I'm not cutting you off, but I, I ask a question, you just answer it. You, let's not. No Go worries. On. Okay. Did you get so what you needed? I appreciate. I would like to see that report, uh, and like you to be aware that of the 23 districts in this county, uh, 22 are in decline enrollment, and that's because the baby rates across this nation and China just had it are very very much down, and we watched that. But Denny, I would. I, I'm to sure that's correct. But my report, my comment, I think you misunderstood it. It says that as the students are not growing and the teachers are not growing, your administrative staff is. Always been a concern. <laughs> I'd like to see your report as it applies to my district. It's, it's a statewide report. I'm sure that your staff can provide you with your specific numbers for your district. Do you know, do you know which link she's referring to? Uh, I'll forward you yeah. the link, but I'm sure your staff could give you the numbers for your district. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. That concludes our public comment portion. We can now entertain uh, questions and comments from the board. D Dr. Hernandez-Alexander. Mr. Barr, I'd like to um, hear from you just kind of where we are. I mean, and if I'm putting you on the spot, you may not have these numbers in your head, and I'm not asking for numbers. Mm -hmm. But it, what, where are we as a district as far as Student, not student-teacher ratio, but it, it, as far as admin growing and our needs for um, shrinking, or do we have needs to to fill? Like, as far as human resources go, where are we with that generally? I, I know I'm not. I don't want to put you on the spot for numbers. 
So I want to make sure I understand the question. The question is, where are we with regards to, are we expanding with? Is there any merit to, to uh, uh, expanding on the merit on the admin side um, and reducing teacher size? Well, I can tell you just based on numbers, we have both certificated and classified. If you look at our management, we have about 240 managers throughout the entire district, but the rest of our makeup of our employees are well over 4,000. So I, to give you a ratio, uh, that I can give you the basic numbers, but I'd have to do more research to maybe do one-to-one -one if that's what you're asking. Okay. Yeah, no, I just mm -hmm. kind of was curious mm -hmm. as to if I can you give you know. those ballparks. Sure, that yeah. would be great. Thank you. Trustee Hunt, I mean, Trustee Lee, sorry. If there's no questions, I'll move for approval of this I, item. Actually, I, I wanted to, but does anybody else, uh, Trustee Hunt? First yes, I, thank, thank you, Dr. Farouk, Mr. President. I want to be very careful on this bumping for classified that we, I mean, I was, Mr. Kinnear and I sat on the operations committee facilities today and through some questions with Director Mueller, you know, we have at any time, we have 3,000 outstanding work orders that, you know, within the ridiculous state budget limit of $65,000, we can directly address. And so, and then we're up against uh, KB Homes, I'm just picking on KB Homes or wherever else, uh, for carpenters that can do, you know, salary-wise and everything better. So I hope we take, and I'm sure you will, knowing you, Assistant Superintendent, that if we have to lose positions there, or it's being covered, that we, we look, and, and that's not done by seniority, if I recall. All classified has very strict rules and regulations. Everything is done by their seniority date, date of hire, along with they have bumping rights. That is ed code. But as you're referring to maintenance and operations positions, um, currently on our page, which we're asking, there are none that would be impacted. Most of your positions on this page um, are dealing with your special education uh, arena. And a lot of those have to do with maybe they were a one-on-one -on -one they were assigned to a student, who maybe that student went up to middle school and they no longer have that need for that instructional assistant at elementary, so that person might bump into a different position. They might go into a position two, but all of those special ed positions on here, I can guarantee you too, they will be filled. They won't end up getting final notification. This is because we have preliminary notification timelines that we must follow. That's, that's very helpful. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Trustee Hunt. Uh, I'll just make two comments, and it's a little bit redundant to what you're saying, but I just think it's very important that there's clarity on this, that because of these laws, we have to preemptively take these, these measures. Uh, as you noted in, in last year, we did these notices, and because of the, the bumping, and, and it ends up becoming a huge list of people, mm -hmm nobody was uh, was forcibly terminated didn't want it to come back to the to the, their job um, based on their whether it was a lack of hours or whatever the case is but it wasn't a lack of that we forcibly removed a position last time we went through the cycle is that correct no but there were people who were noticed they might not have wanted a reduction in right. hours or that position right but i'm saying they, they weren't actually just told hey your your, your job has uh, been eliminated and they actually wanted to be in that, stay if in they that wanted to come back and work in Riverside Unified, they had an opportunity. Right. So that's the point I want to make, is that uh, last year the list was even bigger, right? It was very and, large. And everybody that wanted to go back to their job had the opportunity to go back to their job. I just want to be clear. That, that met the, the, uh, the scope of what uh, the hours and the, the, the demand. They had an opportunity to have access to a position right. in Riverside Unified. I just want to make sure we're clear on that language because it might not have been their exact job. That's fine. But the, the point I'm trying to make is that this protocol and this process that, that's a, mm -hmm. the legal matter, it creates this, this, this uncertainty and cloud and a, a pres presumption that we're potentially um, eliminating these positions and Again, just as last year, that example it did not come to that fruition. It's unfortunate. This is a, a law that um, we have to go through that that process. Um, the only other point I just wanted to make regarding this is that, given those dynamics, uh, and that it's a finite list, it's not like a list of like a thousand people or something like that. That I really hope we personally speak directly, not just as an email or a text or something like that. 
to explain that context so there's not some unnecessary anxiety. Obviously, there is a, it, it's not inconceivable that so, something could happen because um, we are going through that process, but just the nature of it. Uh, yes, can we our, have the assurance we're doing that? Our director, Robin Mesa, she meets with the association. We always bring in the association and they meet with every single individual. They explain to them what their options are and they explain to them what other opportunities they have within our USD and the timeline. They meet every single one of the people I can tell all of you and guarantee you that they are met with. The four, area, the four individuals that will be receiving the layoff notification, they do receive that from our certificated side and we follow a very similar process, but we actually talk to them about, you know, because it's just different, but we do make personal contact. Perfect. I just want to make sure that our employees have peace of mind with the appropriate context of what, mm -hmm. what's transpiring. Uh, Trustee Hunt, did you have anything further you, you want? Okay. Uh, so now you do have a, uh, you're, okay. Uh, Trustee Lee, you have a motion? Yes, so, moved. so moved by Trustee Lee. <laughs> Second by Trustee Kinnear. Please vote. Thank you. The motion carries unanimously. So we will, thank you, Ms. Ibarra. We'll now move to our reports discussion portion of the agenda. And so we only have one item on this portion, uh, which is regarding our career and technical education programs at our school district. Dr. Dan Sosa. Oh, okay. Uh, please welcome. Good evening. So, sorry, uh, there's, uh, I'm showing that there's four presenters. Dr. Angulo, you're, are you? I will be you, introducing Okay, perfect, the thank you. Yes. All right, so good evening, Superintendent Hill, Board President Dr. Farouk, and members of the board. So it is my pleasure tonight to provide an update on career technical education in RUSD, and especially since it is uh, CTE month in February, which is to raise awareness of the role of CTE, which it has on college and career success. So this visual captures our board priorities and how it aligns with our report this evening. Our CTE program and offerings uh, align to the board priorities of student learning, enhancing CTE, and our ongoing work of preparing students to be college, career, and world ready. Our outcomes this evening will be to engage in a CTE program overview, review the connections between CTE and STEM, and provide an understanding of what makes our competitive, competitive advantage focus unique to our USD. The CTE department's mission statement is, we believe all students need to be career ready, period. This applies to all students, whether they are in a formal CTE program or athletes, AVID students, band members, ROTC students, or any students. The goal for students enrolled in CTE programs is to provide them with opportunities to build their competitive advantage through three pillars, rigorous academic knowledge, technical mastery, and professional skills. We have several speakers who will share their unique perspective about each pillar this evening. There are 26 unique industry programs in 45 pathways across multiple sectors of our high schools and middle schools have programs connecting to their feeder sites. At our elementary schools, we are continuing to build career exploration connections as well. The department has a 15-year K-14 continuum beginning in kindergarten and continuing through the second year of college, and there'll be an example a little bit later in the presentation. A scope and sequence was created to support students as they transition from grade to grade. This slide provides a quick snapshot of CTE participation in 2022-23. And I do want to highlight uh, the industry partners here. Uh, CTE programs are successful because of the support provided by our industry partners. We have over 200 partners who provide work-based learning opportunities, such as field trips, guest speakers, mentoring, job shadowing, internships to our students. And we are grateful for the opportunities that they provide our students. The demographic breakdown of our CTE students are listed on the slide and broken down by our educational programs and race and ethnicity. So let you take a look at the slide. Uh, 
There have been significant investments for T CTE programs from the state through grants, the federal government through the annual Perkins grant, and of course the tremendous support of our district through BASE and LCAP funding. Local funding supports are teacher salaries, the contract with the Riverside County Office of Education's ROP teachers, program expansions, and department salaries. State grants and Perkins allow the department to support its 45 pathways by purchasing industry standard equipment and supplies, providing professional development for teachers, updating software, supporting a support for curriculum development, revision of courses, and the five California Partnership Academies. Large scale or capital outlay equipment purchases are also funded through these grant, grants, for example, the ambulance at Ramona and the digital print 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 press at King. Additionally, the Middle School Found Foundation grant allows us to strengthen our connections between middle school and high school programs. Jenna King, our career support specialist, works with elementary school teachers, their students, and MCSS counselors to support career exploration at elementary level. In-class career exploration activities and presentations are implemented regularly and online platform usage by elementary school students have more than tripled each of the past two years helping students discover career opportunities. Each middle school has a CTE program that connects to its feeder school. Shamawa, Sierra, and University Heights each received a California Department of Education Middle School Foundation Academy grant to support career engagement for their students. Middle school programs can be found on the district CTE website. And we believe students thrive and succeed when they are provided with experiences outside of the classroom. Our teachers work with industry partners to provide students opportunities that connect the content they have learned in the classroom to the real world. Our USD CTE leads the region by offering students leadership opportunities through career organizations like DECA and Skills USA. Our growing district-wide ambassador program allows students to build their capacity as program experts and advocate for the CTE for CTE at their sites and at district events. When students participate in technically rigorous and professional CTE program experience, they, they get a head start on their unique post-secondary journey. And this slide is a graphic representation of the department's 15-year continuum and starting with Explore. Explore, we believe conversations about careers should begin in kindergarten and continue beyond high school. Uh, we provide career exp exploration activities and lessons to help students identify their unique tips, which are talents, interests, passions, and strengths. And then we move to Engage, which connects real-world real world context to academic content to help students find relevance in their coursework. From fifth to eighth grade, we provide those opportunities for students to engage with professionals and envision how their own paths and tips align with industry sectors and careers. And then high school, uh, with the experience piece, high school students thrive when we provide those experiences for them outside of the classroom. We work side by side with our industry partners to provide students opportunities to connect, uh, learned, to connect the content that was learned in the classroom to the real world work-based learning. The department connects with with uh, other school districts and business partners in the region to remain current and keep our programs up to date. Uh, additionally, CTE staff works with our instructional department, including expanded learning, uh, math, science, and STEM. The CTE and STEM department created a career conversations guide highlighting the STEM-related careers and the courses students should take to go into those fields. The guide uh, includes information about the wide range of opportunities that students may pursue as they enter high school. And students build their competitive advantage, which is supported by three pillars, rigorous academic knowledge, techni technical mastery, and professional skills. The rigorous academic knowledge is our CTE courses meet UC and CSU uh, entrance requirements, and 30 of the courses are articulated to Riverside City College, which gives students the opportunity to earn college credit for free. Technical mastery, 
Students work with the best industry standard equipment and supplies while learning from experts in the field, which are our CTE teachers and our educational partners. Our professional skills, perhaps the most valued pillar by industry, the CTE department works with educational partners to identify essential professional skills, which formerly known as soft skills. These transferable skills transcend all programs and are emphasized throughout a student's experience in CTE. The professional skills rubric provides teachers and students with a tool to measure a student's growth and proficiency in these skills. And so tonight we have an industry partner, a teacher and a student to share their experiences. And so in first we have um, an industry partner from, we have Roger Clark and Christopher, I'm gonna say this correctly, Bohegian, um, that's right, from Renault Clark Architect to come up first and then we'll be followed by a teacher, Todd Sutfin for our Colony Arts and Services and Business Program at the RVS, and then followed by a student, Erica May Imasa, who will talk about her experiences at North in the, um, in the sports medicine and industry, in the injury management area. And so first, we are going to bring up Roger Clark from Renal Clark to talk about his experiences here. Thank you. Good evening, President Farouk, Superintendent Hill, members of the board. Uh, honored to be here tonight and also honored to be a partner with uh, Riverside Unified. We've been working actually having interns in our office since 2018 and we started working with Donna Schulte and Ron in terms of bringing in these students from MLK, from the STEM high school, uh, from uh, Ramona. Uh, and it's been a, a very rewarding experience for us, but hopefully the idea is, is to expand the opportunities for these students, uh, show them what careers in architecture, construction, engineering can be like. Uh, we've taken them out to field trips uh, where they've been able to go to job sites. They've done all kinds of activities where they've modeled buildings. They've had to make presentations. They've done all kinds of things that are expanding on both those technical skills and those soft skills. And it's also been, I think, extremely rewarding for our staff to be mentors with them. Chris is going to talk about the ACE Mentor Program, and we're uh, lucky to be able to work with uh, Superintendent Hill and implement that program at Ramona High School and get that off the ground. Chris is a member of the ACE uh, Board, and he was actually instrumental in bringing that, that project forward or that program forward for Ramona. He also works with other high schools in the area in terms of providing those opportunities for students. And so the idea of this is just to engage these students, get them excited about it. It's a brief glimpse, uh, but I will tell you some of the other students from the ACE Mentor Program. We have one, uh, she'll be with us again this summer. Um, she's actually a student at USC now, but she's a freshman there. Uh, and she came right out of high school and started working for us and did just a, an amazing job uh, for us. And so the opportunities are there and we'd like to just keep growing that program and we're honored to be a part of that. And I'd like to have Chris come up and talk about the ACE program. Oh, sorry. Good evening board, nice to see you again, Superintendent Hill. I'm gonna try to make this brief. Um, so, yes, I'm uh, architect and associate principal at Renault Clark Architects. I am also um, on the board of ACE. I've been with ACE since 2013. I've served as a mentor. Um, so basically what ACE does, we go into communities uh, where students might not have uh, access to or considered post-secondary education. And we try to um, use, um, uh, uh, I'm sorry, um, <laughs> Uh, learning based uh, education, uh, project based learning, sorry, uh, project based learning uh, to invigorate them and excite them and, and um, introduce them to architecture, construction, engineering. So, as of fall 2022, the board uni unanimously voted to um, accept uh, Ramona High School and sponsor Ramona High School. In fact, I just came from Ramona High School. We just did uh, completed session 10. Um, and so what we're doing uh, is this is the first uh, this is the first for our board and for the chapter is we're doing a construction only program for Ramona High School um, and so what we're doing is we're building on uh, the current curriculum uh, thanks to Fernando Borja that we that we have at Ramona High School and the build yard and we're using our industry professionals we're all volunteers everyone's volunteering their time resources and materials uh, to the program and we're not just continuing what's being taught in the classroom, but we're actually challenging the students to, um, to go above and beyond. So we just did two uh, projects. One was a, a two by four uh, shear wall panel system, and we put a, a, a guardrail on it, and we load tested it. 
So per the uh, code, uh, it's supposed to meet a 200 pound requirement. We had high school students design these hero panels to, to withstand 1,000 pound forces. It was incredible, it was amazing. And we used Simpson Strong Tie as a partner to do so. Uh, we just completed our second uh, four by eight tree wall panel, which we're going to test at the Simpson Strong Tie facility. And uh, we just started project three. We're all waiting uh, for that drill trip to happen, but we're uh, learning about plumbing, si plumbing systems. So they just uh, learned about um, being a little too specific, probably apologize for the time, but learning about uh, PEX connections, PVC, ABS connections, and uh, copper connections. And they're actually gonna go out and do this. So again, um, in, in, in addition to the general carpentry that they're doing, uh, they're gonna be learning about plumbing systems. We're gonna build a plumbing wall uh, with carriers that are installed to the walls that they build and we're gonna water test it. And this will be part of their presentation. Um, I'd like to invite the board to attend our grad night that we're ha uh, hosting this May. We'll be at the Frontier Project in Rancho Cucamonga. Um, and uh, lastly, I just wanna announce that I can't announce his name, but we just put in for a, a national CMIC scholarship for one of your students. I know, I know, I'm not gonna get emotional, but uh, this is, uh, incredible. I, I need to impress upon the board uh, so you understand uh, the, uh, the last CMIC scholarship that we got for someone last year was $32,000. So this is a big deal. Um, anyways, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll limit that there. Thank you for your time. Oops. Good evening, RUSD board members and cabinet. My name is Todd Sedfin, and I teach in the Culinary Arts and Services and International Business Programs for Riverside Virtual School. We provide opportunities for students to build the com their competitive advantage through our rigorous academic and technical content. We find that many students who participate in our programs find their purpose because we offer them the opportunity to experience careers within, within their chosen industry sectors. Using our unique career trees, students explore a wide variety of careers related to their field of study. As you can see here, this is a board that I go over with my students on a regular basis. And it's uh, incredibly a powerful thing to show them career opportunities. Each tree features 12 careers students can enter immediately after high school program completion, as we see here under the entry level careers. 12 careers they can move into after additional post-secondary education and some work experience, as we see over here on the left, and 12 professional level careers students can grow into with advanced education, specialized training, and extensive experience, uh, specialized experience. In total, we have compiled over 900 unique careers on the various career trees for our students to explore. Having a, comp a comprehensive career library gives our teachers a strong foundation for teaching cross-sector curriculum that allows students to find meaningful context across, across the academic content. In fact, my fellow teachers and I incorporate business and entrepreneurial concepts in all of our CT programs, which gives students agency and control over their journey. This gives them a powerful competitive advantage. I would like to introduce one of my, or one of our CT students and ambassadors, Erica May Amase, so she can tell you more about her competitive advantage. Good evening, RUSD board members and cabinet. My name is Erica May Massa, and I have be built a distinct competitive advantage in two CTE programs. North High School Sports Medicine and Injury Management Program, which I completed last year and have added to my experiences in Ms. Kilbert's Patient Care Program at Arlington this year. I am also a proud CTE ambassador for RUSD, which has allowed me to get involved and make new friends with other CTE students. Like all students who want to stand out from the crowd, I have built my own competitive advantage. Being in two different cross-sector programs has strengthened my technical mastery skills by connecting me with my peers and adults as well. It's helped me in knowing what to prepare for in the real world. In North Sports Medicine program, I became CPR and first aid certified and acquired an OSHA 10 general industry healthcare certification. I have also had the opportunity to learn about sports injuries and how to evaluate and treat patients. 
I practice my skills by volunteering my time with the athletic trainer on campus after school. In Arlington High School's health careers and patient care program, I learned how to draw blood properly and allowed my peers to practice drawing blood on me as well. We also worked on measuring vital signs and conducted blood pressure checks over 100 times. These skills are preparing me for a big, bright future in nursing, and I am certain that I am also college ready. Being a CT ambassador helped me to build my competitive advantage, going a step further and getting out of my comfort zone. By doing that, I have earned my peers' trust by speaking for the program and confidence in my professional speaking skills. It has prepared me to speak in front of you all today. This has allowed me to bring awareness to people around my school and advocate, advocate for others, other students as a leader. As an ambassador, I have made connections to community members, including a professor from Grand Canyon University. Because of the way I presented myself, the professor contacted the nursing program at GCU to tell them about me. The next step on my career journey is to become a nurse. I am going to attend GCU's nursing program and have my entire academic plan set. The skills I learned from both CTE programs are going to help me big time as a nurse. <laughs> I feel like I am a step ahead knowing how to give proper CPR and how to draw blood. CTE has given me le leadership skills, which I'm so proud of and excited to use even more. I'm glad I had the opportunity to be a part of the CTE programs I am a part of today, and they will forever hold a place in my heart. Thank you for giving me an opportunity to share my story with you all today. So I do want to thank our guests for being here, but I also would like to thank the CTE team, uh, Jenna King, Nick Medridge, Ron Weston, and uh, Donna Schulte and Thelma Lowry, who couldn't be here this evening, but they've been uh, just an instrumental force in bringing CTE to the district. So I do want to thank them, but at this time we can ask, answer any questions. Thank you, Dr. Angul. Thank you for everyone. The, the format was great, and especially to hear from our, our student, Erica Imasa, you did a great job, and so thank you so much for that. Uh, so that concludes the, the presentation. Trustee Hunt, do we have any public comments on this item? Okay. No, we don't. Not. Thank you. Uh, we can entertain uh, comments and questions from the board now. Trustee Hunt. Thank you. And thank you, Dr. Angulo, and the folks you brought, and Mr. Weston. Mr. Weston, you and I have often talked about. Uh, items like cybersecurity. I think I shared earlier with you that uh, globally it's in the hundreds of thousands, but uh, there at this time, I think it is uh, today, 71,000 jobs begging for someone to qualify and apply for them in cybersecurity. Uh, I noticed in some of the marks we're doing, we're, we're, we've initiated this, and can you tell me more about it? You bet. Uh, so. We have the cybersecurity and networking program at Arlington High School. I believe it's in its fifth year. We had uh, a little bit of an issue during COVID because of online learning and then we lost a teacher. We have a new teacher this year who is really engaged with his students. Um, he has several that are gonna uh, apply for our ambassador program for next year. Um, the goal of the cybersecurity and networking program is to get students ready to be able to enter either RCC or Cal State San Bernardino and take on their programs, which um, at least at the Cal State um, San Bernardino uh, program allows you to uh, move on into a master's program that's, that's co-funded by the, the federal government. And there's a trade-off there with some work experience afterwards, but it's a fantastic opportunity for our students and yeah. um, we've got over I believe it's 180 kids that are enrolled in that program right now would, would you consider uh, as you know I, I would think UCR extension we're at one of the best extensions in the state of California uh, has certifications correct in different cybersecurity could we look at teaming with them whether there's a way to take a 
high school equivalent of what they're going to teach and get them ahead? We're working with the extension program right now. We're also working with their, um, they have a, an apprenticeship program in, in a number of areas, and I believe cyber is one of those. All right. We're working, they've gone out and talked to our students that are close to graduation to, to make sure that they have an opportunity to, to take that on. Right. And, and we have the airlines here uh, just down the street and that logistics right. you and I've talked about, but I would be very interested. You know, I read the, not the other day, but I read a few months back that the job for the young girl that's entering kindergarten this year, her job has not been invented yet. That's correct. And uh, I, so we need to be moving towards, all right, what prepares her for that yet on, uh, you know, and of course it's mathematics and coding or logical. Uh, for a young, you know, they're never going to make an app to replace a plumber. So as Mr. Kinnear and I have talked about at lunch the other day, uh, and it didn't happen during the last PLA because it came in in a, in a different door that wasn't, uh, it just didn't work. But working with both our open shop contractors, I see it's Hilton Coyle here and couldn't have a better community member along with Roger Clark, who I commend for taking these students, but and our our trade unions who have there's some restrictions on uh when you can become apprentice and all that but i know Norda vista has a plan like this every year when i go to the california school board association there's the it may be up north but there's a booth for the electrical Correct. in this union and a booth, you know so i think i'd be very interested in those kind of trades you're not going to replace a plumber you're not electricians are still going to be they're going to have tools that help them lay conduit a lot quicker and all that but one of the things of course i've been at your office jess and and uh very important as you know is estimators how much is this job going to cost us and so you bid the thing right um but construction trades i'm interested in of course law enforcement will be here firefighting will be here we know that drones from war settings in Ukraine and others. Uh, the 11 hikers that so far have been lost at Mount Baldy, uh, they found a, a majority of them through drones. Uh, police departments are gonna begin to move away from, uh, you know, multi-million dollar helicopters to use drones as their optics. And as we've talked about, and I'd be glad to set it up, Santa Ana Unified has an excellent drone program. They also happen to have a, and I think we now have a game design. We have we have three game design programs in the district: Arlington, RVS, and next year at Poly. And Fantastic. those teachers are working together collaboratively right now, and they are setting up an appointment to go down to Century High School to take a look at their program down there. And where, where is Century? Century, okay. Santa Ana. Santa, okay. Yeah, thank you. And uh, because it is the uh, envy of of UCI, from what I. And I believe the assistant soup that, that shares that with me. I don't want you to forget about agriculture. I know we've had some back and forth about someone that would like to lease our corner poly field and all that. But but uh, this, the county superintendent in uh, San Berdu, uh, Ted, help me somebody, Alande, uh, has a very robust hydroponics plan. Uh, whether however you may feel about cannabis, the, the people of California approved it, except for two counties that are allowed to grow outside. All cannabis will have to be grown inside. So there's gonna be jobs there. And because of global warming and some other plants that are sensitive to the changing weather plants, we're gonna be seeing more and more, particularly organic and all grown indoors. So hydroponic is a food, food, water, electricity are, are jobs. I hope we can restore long before your time, Ron, a relationship that should have been even greater that we had with probably the best company to go work for in this town, which is Riverside Public Utilities. Again, they've got a corner on two products that only going to get more big. So I appreciate what y'all are doing. I encourage the board as we look at budgets to enhance what Ron's shop can do, and a lot of that, you know, some of that is materials, but there's a lot of foot on, feet on the ground that we need to make connections with. I always say we have 2,000 plus 
people getting a young person into college, we have nine on your side. Huh? Five. Five. What happened? Um, <laughs> five working to get them into a career that you don't necessarily have to go to college. Cybersecurity will say you need these things. After you get here, if you want to move up, Tommy, you're going to need to go do these things. But they've got a, a paycheck while they're doing it. And so I'm glad to hear you're doing that. Perhaps even consider if they'd be interested working with California Baptist University on their air, very good aeronautics program. I commend you on your nursing programs you. and your law enforcement. But thank you. Thank you. Colleagues, Mrs. Super, Ms. Superintendent, we've got to find more money for career tech. If, if we really believe in it, and we say that on our, our priorities, that orange, college and career ready. Well, it needs to be college, career, and or career. You know, I mean, it can't just be one path, which is through UC Berkeley or whatever. It has to be, I can walk into a career as my father did and took us out of poverty. A man that plowed behind a mule, he was the military, good career, uh, but he couldn't have gone to college. And what would he have been left with working in the oil fields? But so, and again, I'll just share one last because I think about him. He was a bully, but at my high school, there was a guy named Brian, slacker, stoner, and a bully. Uh, my 10 year high school reunion, I'm kind of looking around for him. It's about 6'9. And I said, Where's Brian? And one of the guys said, Oh, last I heard he was changing tires in Santa Ana. And it took me a while. But as I got closer to deciding to run for the school board, I've never forgotten about Brian, that we didn't offer him a lot. We had automotive, we had shop, but would there have been something that would have interested him? 15 years later, just after our 20 year reunion, Brian died of alcoholism. So I think about him. I think about our foster youth that have those short timelines off. And it's, I think about the homeless people and many are it's very, very sad, but many of them just need a job. They just need hope. Give a man a job, hope. So that's my, my soapbox. I'll move it. But I'm so supportive of what y'all need and have and, and the work, Ron, that you and Donna have done. And I'm mentioning, not mentioning three people, and I apologize, have, have done. Uh, I should learn them all so I can trick them all. But have done already, and I, I'm committed to you, and I believe the folks to my right and left left are, are as well. We, particularly in our community, that the number of new people come to our community that have language barriers in particular, give them a job, find them something more than Del Taco. No offense to Del Taco. So thank you very much. Thank you, thank you Mr. President and colleagues. Thank you, Trustee Hunt, uh, Trustee Lee. Thank you, Dr. Farouk. Uh, yeah, I just want to commend you, Mr. Weston, to you and your whole team. Uh, we're really lucky in our USD to have you and uh, have you the last 10 plus years building this program and, and growing your team. Uh, and I, I agree with my colleague. We, we want to give you more to continue to do the work that you're doing. Um, my question is, you know, we have a lot of great programs and similar program pathways at, at different school sites so that it doesn't really matter which school you're at, you, there's a CTE program hopefully for you. But in the event that there is a, a unique pathway that's not offered at your school site, um, what are the plans to make sure that student has that opportunity and how are we leveraging RVS? That's an excellent question. So our, our plan for next year, and we're in the planning stages right now, is to get our uh, students at the non participating schools, Lincoln and Ramona, where we have auto and construction, to be able to take those students from King, North, wherever it happens to be in the afternoon over to one of those sites. So if they're interested in the auto program, they have an opportunity to, to do that. Some of the learning will have to take place electronically, um, and then we want them to be in the auto shop or the construction lab to be able to do the actual hands-on experience. And we've got to be able to start that next year so that students have those opportunities to do that. And based on success and opportunities and busing and all the, the pieces that come along with that, we can look to expand beyond that after, after we get those two up and running. 
Great, that's good news. Um, the other thing I know that you've always talked about is, uh, and you mentioned it here in the presentation, is that these CTE courses are for every student regardless of where they end up going after they, they leave K-12. How do we make that um, goal resonate with our students? Like what are we doing with our elementary and, and middle school students so that they have that same perspective that these classes are for, for everybody? Um, regardless of what you plan to do after well, high school? I think that's where the, the career exploration component comes in for our, our younger grades, their, their tips, their talents, interests, passions, and strengths. As students begin to connect who they are and what they're doing, I believe it kind of connects to our MTSS uh, program as well. The behavior issues will begin to subside because kids are connected. They understand where the connection to language arts, science, whatever it happens to be, come in. And as they begin to do that, then they can look to these programs um, to be able to, to enter them in the middle school level. And one of the things we need to do there is, is expand the offerings to our middle school students so that they have an opportunity to not only explore, but to continue to engage with people like uh, Mr. Clark and, and Renault Clark Architects so that they get a chance to see what that is and, and maybe get a glimpse of what it is so that when they get to the high school level, those options are available to them so that they can continue to, to learn. Um, we're doing uh, a lot of work with our high school and middle school teachers in professional development at the same at the same time, in the same room, at the same table, so that there is this cross um, system alignment so that they understand uh, what students are going to need at the high school level. And then, of course, our high school teachers, we're working with them to make sure that we're making connections to post-secondary, whether it's at RCC, Cal Baptist, or UCR, wherever it happens to be in the local area, for options after high school. Because we believe that graduation isn't a finish line, it's really a starting point for our students. So when we begin to look beyond that, we're really building a program for students to think, I'm continuing my education beyond these four walls of RUSD. Um, and one more question for you. Sure. Um, so in terms of our students that are um, building their schedule around like honors and AP courses, and maybe they're weighing some of these CTE courses and that they could affect their GPA negatively, even if they get an A because of the course load that they're taking, um, what types of steps are, are we moving towards in terms of dual enrollment or alleviating that concern from, from students not taking our courses because of that? So working with uh, Mr. Perez in our office, uh, he's the college and career uh, instructional specialist who oversees uh, our CCAP agreements, our dual enrollment programs, um, to be able to create things like the nursing program at um, Ramona and Arlington, the, the CCAP program there. Um, the other piece, too, is to be able to offer those students, you know, when we're talking about career ready, you know, if a student is in an AP track and they're interested in some type of career program, we've got to be able to offer them uh, maybe a flexible schedule where they can take a zero period or a seventh period, whatever it happens to be, so that they can continue to participate in those career programs. As, a po as um, to answer your question about GPA, I don't really have a good answer for you. Uh, that's something we'd have to think through. Oh, okay. if, a, if a student ha is taking a articulated course, if it's a CTE course and it's articulated and it gets put on the college transcript, we take it from the college transcript and we will place that on our RUSD transcript as a weighted course. So mm -hmm. there is incentive to take that articulated course and you would get the weighted credit after it's completed and posted on the college transcript. And do we make that pretty clear to the students that are, are looking at that option? It, it is a, an incentive that we, when we students enroll and as we advertise, we let them know that anything is articulated. We will get, get the course on the college transcript first, and then we place it on there as they do it. And it, it is weighted. So. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you, Dr. Angulo. And then, Erica, if you don't mind, I have a question for you. <clears throat> So first of all, thanks for being here. Thank uh, congratulations, obviously you're one of our extraordinary students. Um, I mean, to complete two, two different pathways, that's pretty impressive and you have a clear goal and where you want, want to go. So that's, that's fantastic. Um, what would you say to your, your fellow students that don't have a clear picture on what they want to do after, after high school uh, to participate in CTE? And how do you think we can better reach those students um, so that they, they see this as an opportunity to explore, even if they don't know quite what they want to do yet. 
Yes, well, when I first started high school, I wasn't really certain of what I wanted to do. I knew I wanted to do something along the medical pathway, and I've grown love for sports medicine, and I, which, thank you to Ms. Parsons, she has taught me a lot. She's gave, given me a lot of hands-on experience, um, as well as Kylie Murphy, who's our athletic trainer. She's given a lot of time, and she's taught me lots of things. And all of those experiences I've gotten from both of them, they've really given me so much love for um, what I want to do in the future. And I also went to Arlington too this year, and Miss Kilbreth, she, she's so welcoming, she's so nice. She has given me a lot of experience as well. She's taught me lots of things, given me one-on-one -on -one time. Um, they've just both been very, or all three of them have been very welcoming. All the experiences they've given me, and just, I believe that CTE, just one of like the big things is the teacher um, relationship, teacher-student relationship. It's given me so much knowledge, so much confidence about what I want to do in the future, and just the program. Great. Uh about the ambassador program, you mm -hmm. talked a little bit about that. Yes. Um, what made you want to be an ambassador, and how do you think that program is working to help grow the number of students interested in going to, into a CTE pathway? Yes, the ambassador program, it's, I actually got, um, one of my teachers recommended it for me since it was a new thing this year. And I was like, okay, I'll, I'll do it. And um, I've met so many people, so many peers, lots of new friends, new students, grown connections with everybody. Um, just in the, co not only in school, but in the community as well. Everybody's welcoming. Um, they've all given me chances. Just building relationships is what I've gained from the ambassador program, especially with all, all, all of them. <laughs> um, they've done nothing but giving me love, support, and I thank you all for that. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you. Thanks for, again for being here and for, for being just a great example to, to the students that you go to school with. And please don't keep any of what you just shared with us mm -hmm. uh, to yourself. Share it with as many students as you can because we want uh, Mr. Weston's goal of having mm -hmm. every student participate in, a, in at least one CTE course mm -hmm. uh, to come to fruition. So thank you. Um, and then last, thank you, Mr. Clark and uh, your colleague, I'm sorry, uh, for being here this evening, uh, and to all of our partners. I think that's a, an, an integral part of, of this, is to exposing our students to um, some work experience and, and to professionals in the field so that they can see what it's like uh, should they desire to go into that, that direction. So again, thanks to everyone this evening. Great presentation, good update. Um, looking forward to hearing more. I know we had a subcommittee meeting a couple months ago um, and there's some opportunities maybe to put additional investments uh, maybe in some CTE facilities. So I look forward to hearing back uh, from you and your team about some, some thoughts on that and, and Cabinet's thoughts on that. And, um, and one more thought that's escaping me now. Oh, and also as we build out the, the LCAP uh, and take input, I know I've heard some conversations at tables at the two schools that, that I visited about further investing, either continuing the investment or, or increasing investment uh, in, in CTE. So that's all for me. Thank you, Dr. Farouk. Thank you, Trustee Lee. Uh, Dr. Hernandez-Alexander. Um, I'll, I'll try to be quick. I have a comment and uh, some questions. First of all, I want to commend um, Erica for uh, being so bright, so articulate, um, so willing to express um, your thoughts about your experience with CTE. And I just want to say that with nursing being such a competitive undergraduate program, um, you have set yourself up uh, to be very competitive into getting into any nursing program um, that you want to get into. So I commend you for doing the hard uh, work to get there. Um, I, I, I um, am eager to learn more about what we offer with CTE. One of the first things that, um, that I would like to see is to start talking about uh, career pathways and start talking about what would our students learn at CT, through CTE as a plan A. Uh, we keep talking about it like if you, if you don't want to, then you. 
and I want to hear, I want to do this for my life. Today, I watch students uh, with these state-of-the-art computers on very expensive software, creating music that can be used for a score of a, a film that can, you know, be the next best pop song. I mean, there's, and they're doing it right now. And, 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 I'm, and I'm hoping that's the plan A for these students and that that's the skills that they're acquiring right now in their high school. And so that's one of the things that I, I, that's just a comment that I hope that we continue to talk about, like, hey, this isn't plan B, this is plan A. Um, and the other thing is, I'm curious if through the CT programs and any of the pathways, there's opportunity to, uh, to earn while you learn or any type of apprenticeships that might be able to get students directly into the workforce upon graduation of high school. Is there any, anything like that? So we've been working with, uh, it started off at Norco College and Riverside uh, Community College District uh, launch program several years ago prior to COVID. Um, and they, they were working on an apprenticeship program for our students and so um, we, we are continuing to partner with them. We need to find an industry partner to be able to get a student into that program so that they can enter what we're calling a pre-apprenticeship or a youth apprenticeship mm -hmm. program before they graduate from high school. Mm -hmm. uh, so those are ongoing conversations. Um, and then also the UCR um, apprenticeship program, that's an opportunity for students after they've graduated from our, one of our programs to be able to connect to the college part of it, the learning, and then the, the experience part of that, that process. Thank you. So those are ongoing conversations. And I, and I think the key to providing options is exactly what you've already done, is to be able to um, you know, get college credit for the things that they do in CTE, so that there, isn't, that, so that there is true options and true sure. pathways. So thank you for that. Thanks. Thank you, Dr. Hernandez-Alexander, Trustee Kinnear. Thanks, Dr. Farouk. Uh, Mr. Hunt, it's time for my soapbox now. No. Yeah, uh, and I apologize up front, but I have some strong biases about CTE, which I've discussed with, with, uh, with you. You know, I believe uh, career ready, period, is important. There's no doubt about that. I believe articulated agreements with our, our community colleges and colleges uh, offer a benefit to our graduates. I believe having courses meet UCA through G, uh, having our CTE courses meet UCA through G requirements can make a difference with, with kids. However, what interests me the most, uh, the very most, is that career vocational classes connect kids to school now. They make a difference for kids in school now. When I hear Noemi, you talk about uh, about the, 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 the music class. Uh, that music class connects kids to school. Now they want to come to school for that music class. I hope and I expect that in that music class is going to help them do better in their, in their other classes. So career ready period after graduation is fine and dandy, but I really want to to, to expand our CTE programs uh, so that we can connect more of our kids to school. We have way too many kids now that aren't connected at all. Uh, they have no plans for the university. They're not thinking about the university. Uh, they're not thinking about Riverside Community College. They're not thinking about career uh, 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 plans in, in, the, in the future. We, got, we need to we need to hook them in into the, the classrooms at, the, at this point in time. Uh, we need to provide that home away from home uh, for, uh, for, for, for those kids. So when we look at, at uh, we need to do more than look at, at enhancing uh, our classes. Uh, we need to expand. Uh, you know, I hear us say we're going to, you know, grow our numbers. When I visited classrooms with you, our numbers looked like they were, our classes looked completely full to me. Um, I didn't see a lot of room in existing classes or programs for any expansion. We have to expand beyond what we, uh, what we currently, uh, what we currently offer. Uh, I, and I want that expansion uh, to involve students who are currently underperformers. Uh, they're currently kids not connected. They're currently kids that 
aren't, uh, aren't a part of our school plus two or our two plus two programs, uh, that, that uh, they, they need uh, our, uh, our help. You know, I don't want to go back to the old auto shop and wood shop. We're way beyond that. But we shouldn't give up on what the old auto shop and wood shop did for our kids. Uh, it, it, it did provide them uh, a home away from home. It did help them uh, do better in school. So when we expand our programs, and I hope that we do, uh, that we look at uh, helping kids who are currently not connecting at all. And that leads me to ninth graders, because I, I worry about ninth graders as, as, I, as I think we, we all do. And when we looked at ninth grade enrollment throughout our district, we see great discrepancies in how, in, in how many ninth graders are even involved in any CTE program. We have some schools that have hundreds of students involved in CTE in the ninth grade, and then we have some schools that have 50 kids involved in, uh, in ninth grade CTE classes. So I think when we look at expansion, we also have to, uh, to look at what we're doing with uh, ninth graders and helping them uh, be more successful. You know, I don't argue that career exploration is important uh, for, our elementary, uh, for our elementary students. Uh, however, we invest so little in, uh, in CTE at the high school level. I think that needs to be our pro priority. Uh, thanks for doing what you do and uh, supporting in an important area. Thank you, Trish. How, how did I do, Mr. Hunt, on my soapbox? I do, do okay? Thank you, thank you, Trustee Kinnear. Uh, Superintendent Hill, you wanted to add something? Not a salt box, but yeah. Um, first, I'd like to thank Roger Clark and Chris Bohegan. Um, when they wanted to meet with me and Assistant Superintendent San Martin, I didn't know exactly what I was getting into <laughs> or we, we were getting into, and then they told me that they had had the program going before and wanted to get it, get it started back up again. So everybody who's worked to uh, get it going. I very much appreciate it. Uh, when I did my site visit to Ramona, um, the young man who won the pressure test competition was, happened to be in class and he was just so proud and showed me his build. And uh, the thing that got my attention most is he said, I've grown up around people doing this work, but I didn't know why it worked and all the technical ways of doing it properly. So now I'm putting this knowledge with what I've seen all my life. Um, and he was going to win whatever competition was coming up next. So thank you very much for that. And then to getting the scholarship is, is even more so. And um, to our student, um, I believe you were at our State of the District uh, event also. So she helped host our State of the District event. Um, as a as a ambassador, so there I learned a little bit about her path. And then lastly, I was taking a walk this weekend and uh, ran into a community member who I know had a student graduated. And uh, so I asked her right now. Her student got her first certification in our networking classes, and because of that, she took dual enrollment cybersecurity classes to to get the get the college credit. Uh, and went to Cal State San Bernardino cybersecurity program where she got a, a summer internship at MasterCard and they lured her away by paying her, by, by uh, giving her a $120,000 job and a commitment to pay for her the remainder of her college education if they did, if she did it in the location where they needed her to work. So just like, so many examples of the great work on behalf of our students, so thank you for so much for that. Thank you, Superintendent Hill. I'm going to share some thoughts before I turn it back to Trustee Hunt. Uh, great presentation. Thank you, all, everyone, for your efforts. Uh, just a few questions. Uh, one, you know, uh, obviously our business community, the, our chambers are a vital part of how, how these partnerships go. I just want to emphasize that I know that, you know, we're reaching out to as many diverse options as possible. There's the, obviously the Greater Riverside Chamber's phenomenal, and I know you guys work very well with them, but we have the Hispanic Coalition of Small Businesses, the Black Chamber of Commerce, others. I, I just want to make sure we're reaching out to all these different groups, uh, Inland Empire Economic Partnership, different 
Yeah, so that's groups. that's Ms. Schulte's work, okay. and and she connects with our business partners through the chamber and through other organizations, uh, Rotary and some other as well. Okay. And uh, regarding our agreement with the county workforce department, um, there's two things in particular that I think is relevant, and you know maybe Dr. Sosa can speak to this. Not to put him on the spot. You, you've been you've been touching. Okay, both of them. Um, so there's two things that are particularly interesting to me. Um, I, I appreciate some of the pathways that Trustee Hunt was mentioning, like the cybersecurity and others, uh, which clearly have the demand and the job quality components. But what's really important to me, just big picture, uh, is that we're doing this based on on uh, on the what the demand side is showing from the data. And so the, the the value of these workforce partnerships is they can say, this is where the current demand is, this is where it's projected demand, and it, it's commiserate with these quality of wages so that we are building out programs and pathways that align with that. Because um, sometimes something might even sound good to us anecdotally, but if it doesn't show scale and you know the job quality component, then we obviously don't want to invest in uh, as much putting uh, propping up those programs. Because to me, job quality matters. Are we fully utilizing that data and, and you know building out the things in that manner? So we do use the county workforce um, numbers, labor numbers. We also use uh, numbers that the county provides for us. Um, a lot of our labor market. Uh, data that comes is from our Inland Empire Desert Regional Consortium mm -hmm. where um, community colleges the community college district and that's where uh, a number of our grants come from so when we're looking at new programs or expanding existing programs uh, we're utilizing their data most of the time to make sure that we're making those connections if it's uh, you know nominal percentage of job growth and it's going to take a lot of money to get the program started or expanded and you have to increase uh, teacher FTE and those types of things. Those are all pieces that we have to consider. But if it's something where there's a, a large market after school, you know, after high school, then, then those are things that we really want to take into consideration. Uh, absolutely. And both related to that uh, consortium with the community college as well as the county workforce, are we uh, piggybacking on the industry relationships with the community colleges they have the deputy sector navigators uh, yes so we are utilizing those efforts i believe they right. changed the name of that position oh, really? just recently within the last year but yes we we send our teachers out to do professional development with uh, those groups the um, smaller industry sector groups um, sometimes it's engineering sometimes it's nursing or healthcare, but but they're making those connections so that we're making sure that the content that, that students are learning in the classroom is relevant and, and up to date. Do you recall what that new, what the vernacular, what the word they're using for that position? No, I'd have to go back and okay. look. Okay, no worries. Um, so, so the next point I want to make is regarding the apprenticeships. Uh, I think w one thing I just want to say, just kind of philosophically, uh, the reason I think apprenticeships really matter, uh, you know, you're earning while you're learning, and given our demographics, uh, you know, close to 70% uh, about uh, low socioeconomic. For people, if they have to choose between getting the credentials or actually getting paid, and so then, you know, um, and I, you know, had to work at a truck stop when I was in high school to help out, and, and so I, even if there's a better option, if you're not getting paid to do it, then, you know, it matters. So to address cycles of poverty, that's where I think it really matters. Um, but it's the other thing I just want to say is that apprenticeship. Because of that fact, it's a form of employment. It's a it's a it's right. a job. Are we? I know um, Dr. Hernandez Alexander made reference to it, but the building trades. The I know you guys had a meeting with the carpenters recently. Where are we at with like fully utilizing that? I know that's a priority for the governor also. So we don't have anything in conversation with the, the trade unions other than to, to make the connections for students after school mm -hmm. uh, because there's a, a political side of things with the labor union and those types of things. We, we are asking for Dr. Sosa's uh, support for some of that work. Um, but that's definitely something that our students need to have access to mm -hmm. because those, those um, positions typically will offer an apprenticeship after high school. So we want to make sure our students have access to that. But in terms of a formal agreement, those are things that we need to be working on. My understanding, and I had shared an email with the superintendent Hill recently, so I don't know if you can speak to this, but my understanding is, is unconditionally, they, uh, the carpenters in particular, want to help uh, 
set up an apprenticeship, some kind of a okay. program. So I really hope our district can, you know, f follow sure. up on that. These are high quality jobs. No, we'd love that. Uh, and then uh, my next comment is, so w one thing I think is a particular challenge, like a, a barrier uh, for young people is that uh, even if employers uh, want the the support from a workforce standpoint, young people, you know, it's a tight labor market and so forth, having a young person requires a lot more attention and management involved, right, uh, in terms of soft skills, the whole, uh, everything. And so sometimes that alone becomes a challenge. My sense is that there's a lot of progress being made on virtual reality, augmented reality technology platforms. This is not meant to imply that the, the actual physical direct interactions are far superior. I want to be very clear about that. Uh, the point, the reason I'm bringing this up is twofold. One is we need to reach more students, period, right? And, and there's only a certain amount of, of progress and pace that we can have of number of employers and, and all these things and um, you know not seeing every school even listed on there for example so one this could potentially create a greater access okay. um, and two it doesn't require that that management that he heavy um, supervisorial kind of aspect to it um, and again an ideal world if it's coupled with physical instruction, uh, you know, at, and there's a combination of things. I think there's a lot of potential there. I don't know if, is that something that we've looked into? It's not really. We haven't. We have not. But I know that there are things that are available for construction, for auto, for a number of different programs that, that fall under virtual reality. There's some potential grants and um, industry okay. uh, partnerships that I might be able to help facilitate. Right. Um, but I, I think there's, uh, it's a really big untapped potential there. Thank you. Um, the next couple of questions I have uh, is what's your vision like I know like um, one thing that really stood out to me with like Anne-Marie Guzzi and uh, the VAPA program was there was really a sense of like okay this is the progression kind of like a 2.0 and there's different phases of how it could be invested and expanded um, I'm, I know we're just bringing this up to you so I'm not expecting you to have an answer on it necessarily but I really hope and I, I would I'm assuming my colleagues would agree on this it's it's helpful to, for us to understand what would the 2.0 version of this sure. look like if you had more resources and you had more capacity what would it require and what would it proportionally yield um, to be best in class and have a, a higher uh, thing um, I, I really hope that that's something just again you don't need to answer now because it's not fair to just put that out there but I hope that's something internally you guys could talk and work through and, and come back to the board on um, one anecdotal question I have for you is, do you feel, and I'm sure to some extent it'll vary per pathway from the 45 pathways, but do you generally feel like it's more of a function of that we need to go deeper and have a higher quality and depth to pathways or that we need a, a, a broader variety? Again, I know that it's not a definitive either or thing, but just generally speaking, what do you sense as the... Well, you know, we were fortunate in 2014-15 to really start seeing money come back in from the state in grants and some other uh, funding. And so we did a lot of expansion, and I really believe that we really need to go deep. To Mr. Kinnear's point, we do need to provide more opportunities for students, and it may be in trades and other things. Um, but the programs that we have are phenomenal, but they could be even better by making sure that students have exit plans after high school, um, that they're getting certifications, whether it's a dual enrollment or a college articulated credit, something that allows them to understand, like Erica May, that I now have a purpose because I was able to participate in these programs. As uh, Dr. Uh, Hernandez Alexander shared with the music tech program. Those are that's a program that kids come to school and they're they're vested in it and, and they'll go to their English class or their math class or whatever it happens to be because they want to be in that music tech program. So it's incumbent upon us to really go deep and make sure that our our, our students understand why they're in a program like that and what benefits are are a result of that. Um, I know I, I appreciated the, some of the accessibility questions and responses that Trustee Lee brought up about how creatively, if they're not at the school site, how they're getting access. I appreciate that you guys are making those efforts. What do you attribute is the primary reason why we don't have a CTE program, 
you know, uh, formally represented in each school? Cost. Cost cost in materials, building facilities, and FTE. Yeah, I, because I, honestly, like, this really, is, this is the last point I'll just make about this, and I know this was brought up by, I think, all of my colleagues here. It's, it's very odd to me that you have something that's so foundational to public education as CTE, and you guys, you're doing a great job. Um, uh, to me, this is just more about, the, the, or, or just overall, how, the, if you, when you look at the funding amounts reference, it's so small compared to something you think is just like so foundational to um, districts and uh, and opportunities. And um, I, I just think like we, I really hope that you f feel uh, that you can be very bold in proposing things and force us. To, I know there's, it's all trade offs, right? So it's easy for all of us to say that you know we want to fund this and what are you going to cut it from and trade off and so forth. So I'm not saying it's an easy thing, but really put us in a position to make some tough decisions when we know like, what it's going to take. And, and when I say what it's going to take, I mean like where every school has it and it's being done at a high level. And I know that even if we got the funding, it would take time to sure. properly. So I, I, I understand the challenges, but put it out there. Um, okay. I, I really hope that that be the case. And we, whether it's from LCAP, general fund, or more partnerships, we have to find a way to fund it. Um, I'll turn it back over to Trustee Hunt. I've always said one of the things about my following Dr. Farouk on our time here, he always says it more articulately than I do, but uh, I will say I would like to see us uh, have a, it's up to the superintendent, have a quarterly report on this because we've got to be able to measure what you're doing so we know how to reach what Dr. Farouk is saying, and what kind of funds do we need to put in? I always talk about Santa Ana, I realize that, but in the last 10 years, Santa Ana has gone from a district of 60,000 students to 40,000. That has a lot to do with jobs, has a lot to do with the price of land and all of that, but they made a, a uh, commitment to put more funds and emphasis into CTE I suggest we should understand why they did that and how we, we do it. When it comes to working with organized labor and open shop and all that, you've got a board up here, Dr. Sosa, that knows politics. I know Jimmy Elrod, Mr. Kerry knows Jimmy Elrod, uh, Dr. Farouk knows Jimmy Elrod. We can work with y'all. He might swing at me first, but, but uh, uh, Jimmy and I know each other. I mean, there's great people there, and they want to be a part of it. I would also, in relation to that, Doctor, well, I can ask for that on future uh, board agendas. I, I do think for all of this, for everything we're doing, whether it's, it's a child that is on their way to Dartmouth or on their way to, to uh, plumber school, whatever, I'm going to ask the board again. I'm going to pound on it until you finally throw me out. But to work with the superintendent of the county, Dr. Edwin Gomez, on uh, and look at and install fiscal responsibility. We can educate them for Harvard or we can educate them for whatever. If they don't have fiscal responsibility and understand the power of money and how to invest it and how, you know, oh, I'm getting a $50,000 job. Well, what do you really make out of that? And how much is uh, understanding fiscal responsibility that some parents may teach it at home? Jerry and I really didn't. My daughter got her master's in England. Val Victorian, she came back, was going to buy a car and said, Dad, I got no idea. How does this things work? So I'm just going to tell you about Taylor Hunt. But if we do that, and what would, and a man who comes from a family that picked crops and was able to do and get to where he is now, and one of the first thing he implements is fiscal responsibility wasn't just a in the air thing it was it was he understood it and um, it's a beautiful story so um, thank you again I would like to see this and the communications plan come back Dr. Farouk on a quarterly basis uh, again if if we can't measure it um, we can't improve it yeah. thank you thank you uh, and maybe for st staff to give some feedback on how much time they would take to develop the plan, because th that might help frame some of that conversation. Uh, Dr. Hernandez-Alexander. 
Yeah, I, absolutely. Measure what matters, right? That's really important. Um, I also uh, just want to now pay you back with the conversation. I think we've been coming into the circle about um, really what we're saying is that we want to provide an opportunity for our students to start creating generational wealth. And that comes with a, a, a career as soon as possible and with financial literacy, which is what uh, Mr. Hunt's talking about. I would like to, uh, in earnest, entertain, um, since we're talking about the importance of trades and in particular carpentry being such a, and you know, construction being such a, um, a lucrative business, for lack of a better description, I, I would like to provide our students more opportunities to be able to get into construction. Um, we were talking about Southwest uh, Carpenters. They have a, a, a K through 12, well, a high school program called Career Connections. And I would like to have a conversation with Dr. Sosa. I know you and I have a, a meeting pretty soon. But I would like for us to have a real conversation about what it would look like to partner with Career Connections. Uh, they have curriculum. They have apprenticeship, pre-apprenticeship uh, pathways um, that they partner with schools. And uh, it's kind of a, a set up program, a program that's already set up for success and for a career uh, almost immediately after high school. Uh, so long as a student can get to a job site, and that's always going to be the the, um, the situation with um, with that type of work um, or any work. But I, I, mean, I would like to just kind of see if we can get something a little bit more official about a conversation to see if we can't partner with them in order to expand that arm of CTE. Thank you, Dr. Hernandez Alexander, and that concludes all of our board comments. So thank you so much for all your presentation. Okay, uh, now we're at the meeting conclusion portion of our agenda, and uh, I would like to put out there if any board members would like to request agenda items for future board meetings. Uh, Trustee Lee. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Farouk. Uh, and it doesn't need to be at the next meeting, even the one after that, but one relatively soon, probably before the summer. Uh, an update on dual language immersion program uh, and uh, overall D DLI plan. And kind of just an update on I think our first class is graduating this this year from Poly. Uh, just an update on that. Thank you, thank you, Trustee Lee, uh, Trustee Kinnear. I have uh, three things. I know that staff's working hard with the help of others, including cabinet. Uh, uh, but I'd like to know more about uh, the progress we're making with our 130 to 180 seniors who aren't on track to graduate for in, in May. You know, how, how's the intervention uh, working so we don't wait until May until uh, to, to hear the results? Uh, expand that conversation to the 1,066 11th graders who are behind in credits. Uh, can we get an update on, on how those interventions are, uh, are uh, working? And then finally, we didn't get an update on ninth and 10th graders who are uh, behind in credits. I'd like to hear about that so we could be more proactive with, uh, with what we might be doing to, uh, to help them. The second comment is I'd like to have a report on uh, project labor agreements and how they could benefit our district and community. And, uh, uh, you know, I don't know if that's appropriate in this forum or in our operations committee with Mr. Hunt. Uh, that's, uh, if you could take a look at that, Dr. Farouk, I'd appreciate that. You, you mean like more the community workforce benefit agreements that involve the yeah. apprenticeships and the, uh, the exactly. whole broader effort? Okay. Thanks. Uh, that uh, would, would need to go to the operations subcommittee. And so we can coordinate for that to happen. Great. Perfect. And then uh, last meeting, Mr. Hunt asked her information on the, the school plus two, not not the two, not the two plus two uh, that, uh, that, that I re refer to. We got data on uh, school plus two. I'd like to have a report on, uh, you know, what, what we're doing uh, to improve on the numbers that we saw. Uh, so I'd like to, to hear our plans to, uh, to, uh, to uh, uh, for our, our plans for improvement. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kinnear. Trustee Hunt. Well, first, in response to my colleague on the committee, I, the first step I'd like to take 
is not to jump into the pool of the PLA, I'd like to understand. So I would ask uh, that uh, Mr. San Martin, uh, Measure O is beginning its seventh year. And so in the bids we've had, working with our construction managers like Tilden Coyle here, what have the bids been, as we had that study before, uh, on this, you know, on Harrison, which, which of the subs were, uh, per, you know, labor, uh, organized labor, and, and which were open shop, just to begin to understand the, the mix. We want to know uh, one concern that uh, organized labor has is that uh, local jobs are going away, they're traveling down to Anaheim. But I want to understand that just as we begin to f formulate these ideas. If we're going to ever do another bond, it's going to be, have to be much more collaborative than it would be. I'd also like an update uh, and at the time of quarterly, but we need to have a quarterly update on, we have a very nice outline for a district communications plan prepared by Dr. Perez's staff. How's it working? What are we doing? How many of this do we do? How many of that? What are we trying for that? Well, you know, and, and all of that. Uh, can't stand studies and all that to stay on a shelf and collect dust. I don't believe this one is, but we need to prove it and, and we uh, be involved. Again, going back to human trafficking, it's, it's about education of those people and communication. It's about education of other community we serve and it's communicating to them. So that's what the plan is. We put a lot of money into this plan and I, I wanna see that happen. I'm asking for those two and uh, uh, Oh, and lastly, uh, as, as our colleague, uh, Dr. Hernandez Alexander uh, stated, it's the uh, Black History Play Parade on the 11th of February. I look forward to being there. I'll be one of the back cars, usually the fire truck, but the lady in my life, my, my uh, left here, will be uh, the Grand Marshal, and I well deserved. So, you're, you're gonna throw beads like in Louisiana? Okay. I'll get you some. That's, that's a lot of uh, agenda items. So. Yeah. <laughs> that's good. Okay. okay. So uh, tonight, uh, as we shared earlier, uh, and we adjourn in loving memory of our uh, uh, Florina Lopshaw, who was a dedicated math teacher at King High School for the past 22 years of her a broader 30-year uh, teaching career. So uh, I adjourn our meeting at 8.33 p.m.